Hey there, hi there, cozy folks. Hello. 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 How y'all doing on this lovely Tuesday? I, for one, very excited to be here for another week of shows. Starting with some silence today, which should be pretty dang fun. During the pre-roll there, many thank yous to Nurkit for 11 months of support. Just one more to full year. Dick Biggins also with 11 months. Thank you. For almost reaching those full 12 and 12 uh, and almost a half year, excuse me, for Dwarven Hearts. Thank you for five months of support. How's it going, Schmail? I had a really fun time with that Clash deck. That was... That was very good. We did that uh, back in May. Some seeded runs. That was really good. I was just reading about the James Webb telescope. I didn't see the photos, though. How's it going, Abona? Adonis Incarnate, 39 months. Taking down the tower. Good stuff. How's it going? Oh, you're uh, Honashi810. Thanks for four months of Prime Sub. Martin's score is easy. How's it going? If you enjoy some pizza, Flintlock. Hey there, Reclusive Caribou. Mr. Baconudo. Jedi Monkey. Cheesy Wiz. Unique Lique. Teutonic Knight. Name is Seba. Broken Ace. Zizzy Vivification. Bailey. And everybody else. Hello, hello. Jaw worm dropping, that's right. I'd say jaw dropping was... was our most recent defect win. We had a really good time on this Ironclad run. Early membership card. Um, was this where we picked up an early Juggernaut? Yes, yes. We transformed a strike into Juggernaut, and I kind of rolled with it. Picking up a Flame Barrier... Early blood for blood. And it wasn't really until the self-forming clay that I started to feel particularly good about Juggernaut. But this ended up being Barricade, Corruption, Double Impervious, uh, and Body Slam per damage. And that was pretty dang fun. Excuse me, pretty dang fun. Body Slam, yeah, here it is. I knew we had one. Holy heck, Scruffy, that's a lot of waffles. 250,000 waffles just flaunted in chat. Tasty. Tasty. Let's go in zero sum. So with Ironclad marked down, that means it's back to silent in our four character rotation here. As we go about our business attempting to slay the Spire a hundred times with every character this year. How's it going, Fistfuls of Cheese? Latest Endeavor's been the one relic achieving. Finding the hardest part is not accidentally taking relics based on muscle memory. I know how you feel. It is a surprisingly difficult thing to do. Not click on the relic in the chest. Not click on the relic after the elite. Don't forget that you can, if you do so accidentally, as long as you don't go to the next floor, you can use the save and quit feature to reload the floor and avoid taking the relic after you shamefully click on it. Emu like bird, thanks for 28 months. <clears throat> And yeah, don't forget that certain events will give you relics that you can't turn down, such as the Mark of the Bloom, Niao's Lament, the starting bonus, that's a relic, so you, you can fail it even on the first floor if you click uh, enemies of one hit point as your starting boot, and that's pretty funny. Do have a, uh, if you haven't seen it, I do have a Who Needs Relics tutorial video, which I did with the Watcher. And I think that was pretty, uh, pretty good. Golden Idol, also a relic. Yes, that's another good one to uh, keep an eye out for. The Golden Relic. Idol. Golden Idol Relic. Hmm. This additional fire. Late Shop seems reasonable. Can we want to go through these nodes at the minimum? Could even go three fires, no elite, but I think 
back. Oh, hmm. If I fight this elite, I can't get to this fire, huh? Interesting. Pretty unlikely to fight an elite, then. In the first half of this act. I might just go for several upgrades. Fight uh, this is our one and only elite. Try to get past Hexaghost. Silent more than the other characters is okay with a fewer elite act one. It means you can go more defensive with your card picks, especially. Failed on the first click. It's tough. No choice but to give up all gold. Hey, as noted, yeah, you can you can beat the red mask gang and then not pick up the mask off the ground. That's an option too. How's it going, Brexter? So, starting bonuses here. A, remove a card. That's always a decent start. I think we would just dunk one strike, especially if I'm not necessarily forced into an early elite. Then starting down a strike could be really good for our long term. So I'm thinking we do something like this pathing-wise, by the way. Start out here hereabouts? Maybe two events. Um, grab our basic combats, get a few damage cards. We'll be looking for things that address Hexaghost as we go. Maybe getting a couple poison cards and upgrading them. Um, then we take our accumulated money and upgrades. We try to fight an elite, get to the shop. Probably go through here. I imagine we'll mark this in yellow. This is predicated upon not finding a random shop here or here, though. Um, option for red path here, or even here, actually. Oh, no, this one's more reasonable. How did I not see this one? This is the most reasonable path. Here, red. I was totally missing this. Okay, that gets us the upgrade before the elite and then still gets the good second half of the act. Yes, I like that a lot. So we'll take a few nodes to get ready for the potential of this elite, looking to hopefully be able to tackle this. The earlier you can get relics and money, the better. And ideally, we'd like to roll into this shop with about 250 gold. Can do the average here. Every enemy is 15 gold, every elite is 30. So 15, 30, 45, 60, 90, 105, 120, 150. Plus 99, yeah, almost exactly 250 gold going into this shop, which is a good amount to have. Purchase this as a card removal and a relic, or some combination of cards and remove and relic as necessary. So I'd prefer not to lose all my gold, although choosing a rare card at the start can be very powerful. In particular, if you're looking to take on an early elite, then starting with a glass knife, a die die die, or an alchemize can all be really, really good. And there's a few other silent rares that are quite nice early on. Corpse Explosion... Um, tools the to trade can be decent. Don't want something like a nightmare or a wraith form, not immediately. But they have use later. In general, silent ray is a bit hit or hit or miss here. I'm just gonna go for one strike remove. And we'll see how we feel. Adrenaline can be nice to start with, too. I agree with that. Classic jawworm. On floor one. After removing a strike, this could be a little awkward, although I think this draw means it's not. Good draw. When there's only four strikes to the deck, drawing three of them in one turn is quite difficult to do. Uh-oh. Never mind. We are suffering here. For our strike removals. Of course we are. All right, not too bad, though. An acceptable price on the first floor. Losing 11 health there. I'm not going to take a riddle with holes. It's a stupid card, quite frankly. Very hard to make this actually useful. It can be a decent desperation pick in the early game, but let's grab an acrobatics. I don't want to deal with bad attacks. I'd much rather have something decent. Having an acrobatics lets me take an eviscerate or a sneaky strike more easily as well. Hey there, get raving. Thanks for 22 months of support. Just 
dropping off the Bezos bucks, well, it's much appreciated. Thank you. Enjoy your holiday. And good. Okay, not a bad fight. Please give me a decent damage card. Ideally, yeah, Sneaky Strike or Eviscerate. Second Riddle? No, we'll take a Noxious Fumes. Second Riddle is funny as heck. Noxious Fumes applies two poison per turn to all enemies. And that can be a really good way to not only defeat our Act Boss Hexagos, but also to get a slow damage plan in place for many different fights. Fumes is uh, definitely one of my favorite Act 1 cards. 275 gold and a curse. Shop's way too far away for that to be reasonable. This is one of the best uh, trade money for a curse opportunities in the game. But tis not to be. Not here. Not now. Ouch. My hit points. Why is Riddle Withhold bad? It is 15 damage for 2 energy, slightly better than Strike, uh, with no secondary effect whatsoever. The benefit of Riddle with Holes is that it hits 5 times, ostensibly allowing you to boost the damage 5-fold with sources of strength or something similar. Problem is, Silent has no native ways to boost the damage of Riddle with Holes by a flat amount, so it ends up just being worse than the Silence other damage cards that have attached properties, like uh, Predator is a really, really good example of a card that's just better with, than Riddle with Holes. It does the exact same amount of damage, but also adds two draw on the next turn. Situations where Riddle with Holes does better damage are so few and far between, it's almost barely worth mentioning. The Shark, thanks for two months of support. And Chun, thanks you so much for one short of a year, 11 months. A sheep and a drum and a snecko fall off a cliff. But dumped. Brutal. In Venom Sadistic Nature, one of the one of the few situations where uh, where with Holes can do something. And that it is fun when that happens. But we have neither of those things now, and certainly no expectation of finding either of them in the future. I love an early auto attack for damage, but heck yeah, I'm going to take uh, Alchemize here. So we can make potions each combat. Two good potions might let me fight the elite, but I think we're currently going to be going green path here. Just a hunch. What you got? Actually, I don't think I'm allowed to play that Alchemize yet. We got to strike this one. Can't allow all three of them to attack me next turn. Might have it anyway, though. Oh, good. Curl you up, block, kill the front one. Middle one's a problem next turn. Hmm. Awkward. Very awkward. As we go defend, defend, neutralize. Take more than I'd like to. <laughs> oh dear. Alright, well, we can, I think, thoroughly rule out fighting the elite now. Didn't even get a potion after the fight, so we got in four fights and found an alchemize, and currently I have one smoke bomb. Okay. Interesting choice here, three damage options. Terror is the damage card I like best on Silent. Uh, yet another example of why Riddle with Holes is not a good card. With Vulnerable, because it's a low base damage number, Riddle with Holes rounds from 3 to 4, rather than getting a proper 50% bonus from Terror. But Terror is a very good card on Silent overall, boosting your physical attack damage by 50% for a whole fight which is nice, but I do like the idea of stacking more poison with Noxious Fumes, which is making the Poison Stab seem rather appealing as a compliment here. 
think that's probably what I'm going to take is Poison Stab. Especially if I'm looking to scale more poison against Hexaghost or later game enemies. I like it quite a lot. I'm going to upgrade Fumes at this rest site. And then, like I mentioned, this red path is off limits because we did not find any good potions at all. Our deck is lacking. Our hit points are depleted. We're not in shape for an elite fight right now. The elites of Act 1 will curb stomp us. And that means we need to avoid them for now. It doesn't necessarily... It's not the worst thing in the world, but... It's, uh... Should avoid for now. We'll get a couple of rest sites. I guess I'll take this event. Let's take one event. It's a merchant. Okay. Oh my, is it ever a merchant? Wow. Very, very good options here. Oh, we're two gold short. If I'd known how this was going to happen, I would have taken the Regret Curse here. But I can't afford Deadly Poison Sneko's Skull, right? Actually, it might be 12 gold short. 164 plus 54. Yeah, 218. Yeah, we're eight, uh, 12 gold short. Okay, that's not a big deal. Other things that are very, very good here. Glass Knife on sale. Which I could upgrade immediately. Upgraded Glass Knife does 24 damage for one energy, which makes it a the best single card on Silent for absolutely chonking an enemy into small pieces right away. Very good against Elites of Act 1. Very good against um, Act 2 in general, also. Blade Plans is here. Very valuable Silent power, letting us retain one card each turn. Almost always a good idea to pick up the first one of these that you see each run. Katali's Mirror, duplicate a card. If I was going to duplicate anything, it would probably be the Fumes Plus, but you could make an argument for duplicating our, our Alchemize and getting more potions that way. But Skull definitely gets us hugely ahead on the Poison game, which is a big deal, uh, not only now because it lets me beat Hexaghost, but also later for many, many other different things, too. So I really do like the skull, and I like relics in general as a way to scale up. Let's buy that. Unfortunately, I can't buy anything else here. So we'll be on our way. Yeah, exactly. Not a, not a necessarily a snap pick with two poison cards, but pretty good. Pretty good. Might end up resting at the next fire. We'll see. For now, I'm going to choose to upgrade, I think, the poison stab. Continue to improve our damage output, but... I don't know if that's a particularly good upgrade at the moment. The boot! Oh, I should have taken the double riddle with holes. Chat, why didn't you tell me this was going to happen? <laughs> we could have had the riddlest deck of all. Boot increases unblocked attack damage from less than 5 to 5. Told me the boot was coming. Oh, yeah, they did, I guess. But now I can take the blue key. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Let's get this Neutralize upgraded. Get that extra turn of weaken. Oh, you stinky. Let's see, that does 12 up front. Is there any way for me to kill you outright? We just Alchemize and Bomb. I don't think that's a good idea. 12. 18. Can't kill you. Oh yeah, we have poison. Uh, we have skulls. So this is 13. Still not quite enough to kill the louse. But yes, that is plus one. 13. Do I do acro double block? I think that's what I do. Or acro fumes block. Let's go double block. Be back for you, Alchemize. Take one. Take one. Uh, just 
just go strike over fumes here. Hopefully draw the alchemize. Dang. Did that to myself. Do get a potion though. Ooh, and backflip deflect prepared. Hmm. I've been increasingly about backflip as a silent card. Actually, with acrobatics, deflect wouldn't be unwelcome. No longer going to take the yellow path here, although I could remove a strike at the shop. I don't think that's a great idea. I think I should go this way. Gear up more for this elite with more card rewards, more potions. All right, let's take a deflect. Card I don't take all that often, but I think with the draw from the acrobatics, we'll actually quite appreciate it. Entirely willing to use my attack potion here. Especially if it lets me kill one of them. Fumes would do really good wonders, but next turn's gonna be ugly. Let's use this. Perfect. Dash is good, stab is good. Let's go dash. Hit. Be four poison, so this kills you. Six, huh? Hmm. Or Actually, I can take a little bit less than six. Strike strike kills you. Lock four, take six again. Right, defend, deflect. Neutralize. Take five? Take five. Five is less than six. Potion's really good for that upcoming, upcoming elites. And a regen potion. We'll be able to use that for health in the next fight. And then still get a new potion from the Alchemize. We're also able to grab an area damage card all at attack. Which I skipped before because it was up against the Alchemize. But now I'm willing to take it. Maybe consider dodge roll if I had a dexterity at this point. Or if I had... Uh, not taking the deflect. Get him. Speaking of dexterity. We just want to block so that we can get the most out of this regeneration before the slaver dies. You can get to heal from regen on the turn an enemy dies from poison. So we heal and then poison applies. And we get another potion. And we get a well aid plans for free. We could also take terror now. Would have really liked that if I'd taken the glass knife. I think I'll just take the plans. Letting us retain and I'll take the swift potion for card draw. Although I would have preferred the dex pot against two or three elites. It's uh, the gremlin knob that has me potentially worried here. Oops, we're not fighting, thankfully. Boy, can I get stuff done this turn. Let's go Fumes. Uh, wake up next turn, or I could just go this turn. Can wake up with Poison Stab, Fire Potion, Alchemize, which I think is too good to ignore here. Brilliant. And that poison will just go up by four per turn, which should lead to a swift resolution to this fight. I don't need hit points anyway, right? 22 will be fine. 22 will be fine. For Hexaghost. Trucker says, why does the fire have a whiskey that tries to kill you? My understanding is that uh, during early development, all of the monsters were named after various alcohols as sort of a placeholder name. Uh, 
Everybody else got a real name eventually, but Legavalin here, named after the whiskey, kept the placeholder name for one reason or another. They just liked it enough that it stayed. So that is the name of this enemy. Not coincidence that they share the name with that liquor. It's where the name comes from. Mob bank this early is not too bad. Definitely glad I didn't go this way, because we would have found the mall bank right before the shop. That would have been very sad. I also like this calculated gamble. I think we don't need a second poison stab, although with the Sneko Skull it's not bad. But I like being able to uh, to cycle through the deck, get to these powers a bit more quickly, or just otherwise discard what we don't want. What was in the chest? The boot. The boot was in the chest. I guess I'll lose the explosive potion for the cunning potion. It's eight more damage against a single target like Hexaghost here. And we've got some really good upgrades. We could upgrade Gamble so that it doesn't exhaust. We could upgrade All at Attack for plus four damage. We could upgrade the Willade Plans to Retain Two. I like the Retain Two upgrade in particular. Let's do that first. But uh, assuring a Runic Pyramid, of course. But several of the damage upgrades could have been really good as well. Overall, with Fumes in play on turn one, which is optimal, I think we'll have a very easy time with this fight. Yeah, let's use this now. Better tap pot. Yeah. Defend, defend, take a little bit. Sounds good to me. 20 poison already. I think we're easily on track to win this. Easily, I tell you. Two-time champion. Thanks for three months of support. Two-time instead of a gun. All right, I don't want to gamble away all of my blocks, do I? I guess there are some blocks. It's fine. It'll be fine. It'll all be fine. Yeah, we got some blocks. Just not next turn we don't. enough. Er, wait. It was quite enough. Either way, GG. Pretty comfortable Hexaghost victory there. We leave the act with uh, decent money, with two very full potion slots, and with a Wraith form that we can retain using our Willied plans. Not many better blocks than that. Wraith form gives us intangible, meaning all enemy damage is reduced to one. We actually also have the basic pieces of Grand Finale. Grand Finale is very, very powerful, but can only be played if there are no cards in the draw pile. For a Finale to work well, you must have two things, in my opinion. One, very good card draw. A card draw that can draw variable numbers of cards, ideally. Calculated Gamble can help with that. Also got an acrobatics here. The other thing you must have is access to retain. We have both of those. So we could take this finale, but I think with the Sneko Skull, we don't really need to. Especially when we get we can get some invulnerability. Wraithform pairs particularly well with poison, as that poison does more damage the more turns you have, and Wraithform gets you free turns. Nielzio says, is there a situation that is not Runic Pyramid where well-laid plans is not great? Yes, I can I can think of a couple. 
Ultimately, retaining cards limits the number of cards you can put into your hand. So if you're trying to draw more than eight cards per turn, well-laid plans can work against you. And the, the quickest example I can come up with for, for 10 card per turn draw is Pocket Watch plus Snekawai together would draw you 10 cards at the start of your turn. If you retain any cards, then you are losing out on some of those draws. So that's a situation where the well-laid plans might be a disadvantage. That said, because well-laid plans is optional, you can always choose not to retain cards on a turn where not retaining cards is better. Another situation where well-laid plans is of no use, if your deck has some kind of infinite draw combo, that it achieves very quickly on turn one, then retaining cards has no use to you either. I agree. With the backflip, the finale would be a little bit better here. I agree. I agree. Barbinator, what card does the silent like to play at Christmas time? Wreath form. That's what I'll be taking. I like the current two potions quite a lot, especially draw potion with the wraith form. Now that we have a wraith form, more energy would be good, or we could even consider, say, a Sneko Eye. But there is no Sneko Eye here. Our top options are replace our two draws on turn one with one draw every turn. That can be a good thing, but only if fights go on for more than three turns. Coffee Dripper, which is just flat, more energy, but prevents us from resting, which is a little bit spooky. But uh, Silent, more than anyone, is pretty well equipped for Coffee Dripper. I think Alchemize does help with that, too. Or Black Star, giving us extra relics from elites. We're not great at elite fighting. We could do it with the Wraith Form and the Sneko Skull, but I wouldn't call us excellent at it. Especially since we have some extra card draw in this deck from acrobatics and such, I'm thinking personally that more energy per turn is the way I want to take this. Um, so I'll be grabbing this coffee dripper and we're going to hopefully find some way to heal ourselves from here on out. That would really, really help things out a bit. Hmm. Okay, we should go to this shop probably. I like going uh, fewer elites this act if possible. I think we can manage one or two. Not three, though. Three is crazy. Hey, hello and welcome to OMTL. Life's good. Have a seat and enjoy. Fluctuation EM, thanks for 31 months. Prime sub on Prime Day. Prime time. Atlas WW says, why might Silent be better for Coffee Dripper than for the other characters? Two main reasons I consider Silent a little bit better at uh, dealing with the Coffee Dripper. Reason one, Silent has the lowest max HP of all characters. Why does this help the Coffee Dripper? Well, when you rest, you heal for an amount based on your max HP. With the fewest H max HP of all characters, that means the Silent heals for the least when resting at rest sites, and therefore the Silent is losing the least amount of healing by giving up the rests. Reason number two is the Ring of the Snake. Uh, part of the big problem with Coffee Dripper is the inability to cure the chip damage that you receive, which particularly happens on turn one and turn two of many combats. By drawing two additional cards on turn one, the Silent significantly reduces her odds, although it does not eliminate them, of taking an enormous amount of damage early in fights and therefore gives herself uh, a bit of a better chance at a, of, at a good outcome. Can we do something like this? Depending on what we find here. I might even go no elites this act. I'm okay with that. I like that we have four energy. I like that we have a Sneko Skull. I like that we have a Wraith Form. I like that we have a Will Aid Plans Plus. And I like that this mall bank is collecting money. So if I do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen times twelve. That's a lot of money. 
That's 168 additional gold just from the Maw Bank. We should hit this shop with well over 500 gold. I like it. Ooh, this could be a tough fight for us. Our ability to bust through artifact layers is not so great. Or is it? Nice draw next turn. Perfect. This enemy is very good at blocking. But anything that bypasses blocks, such as poison damage, can deal damage directly to their hit points. Choke also can, amusingly enough. Get choked, sir. And there it is, the third Riddle with Holes. Sapphic Mystery says, what happens if you bottle a card with an eight? Basically nothing. Having a card in a bottle also does exclude that card from card removal, usually. So it becomes unable to be selected by the falling event, for example. And it means you probably won't be able to remove it from purchasing at a shop either. But these are pretty inconsequential changes. I want an Endless Agony Plus. Just a little bit of free damage, maybe? Do I want a Terror at this point? It does help a little bit. I think I'm going to take this uh, Endless Agony, actually. Essentially 12 damage for zero energy. It exhausts, so once, once played, you don't have to deal with it anymore. And it can help us deal with uh, low health... Yeah, exactly. Stuff like this. Riddles, where's Riddle with Holes when you need it? Come on. Where's Riddle with Holes? Uh, I guess I'll use this, but I'm not gonna like it. Um... That's not... I guess I should have played the Wraith Form, that's so funny. <laughs> Let's start with the attack potion. Okay, choke can help. Choke can kill a bird. And let's use the other potion too. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty rare to see all three of them choose to use this move. Pretty funny. So I can go block, 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 block. And that'll do 12 plus 4. That'll kill the middle one. We take one damage. Two damage. Can't do math. Math was outlawed in my country long ago. Unfortunately. Show me a corpse explosion or crippling cloud or something. Upgrade and prepared is pretty tempting. Draw two, discard two for zero. Now I am wishing I'd taken Grand Finale, quite frankly, but uh, that's not bad. Could also consider Tactician, given that I have Acro and Gamble, but I like the card that has a free plus on it. Second Fume's not too bad, but they don't stack together in the way you'd want them to. Very happy we got our Wraith Form upgraded for free here at a random event. That third turn of intangibility means we can play it a lot earlier in fights without uh, needing to feel uncomfortable, necessarily. Be back for you later, Alchemize and Fumes, apparently. Hmm. It's fine, it's fine. These two are a bit tricky, the Mystic and the Knight. Instinct might tell you to target the Knight first, but it's a trap. You'll have a much, uh, sorry, Instinct might tell you to target the Healer first, excuse me, but it's a trap. The Centurion 
is should be your first target. It's the Centurion makes life difficult by blocking for the Mystic. And in addition to that, if the Mystic is killed, the Centurion goes berserk and attacks with a times three multi-hit, which is pretty scary. Whereas the Mystic, if killed for, uh, if the Knight is killed first, the Mystic is not really a problem. Of course, now I have negative a million dexterity, and yeah, life is tough. Please continue to be poisoned. Good. Even better. Keep that there. Draw these. Keep these, rather. Good. Just in time. Perfect, in fact. Ah. Rude lady. I was worried you might do that. My blocks do nothing. My attacks do nothing. Unfortunate. Take tons. Bummer. Didn't have to do that. Uh-oh. Hey, that'll do. So, Blessing of the Forge, well-laid plans, defend, defend, neutralize, keep the Wraith form. Let's do that. Take five. Early in the fight. Make sure you don't take anything later in the fight. Now's the time. Okay. It's definitely a good find. kill the fungi beast next turn. Ideally, we'd like to kill the parasite at the same time. It's not going to happen, though. Can we kill you fast enough? That is the question. Minus 18 is 20 with the attack potion I could kill. July game vote is up. Heck yeah. Every month we play a game based on a vote that we hold. In a two-stage process, first we solicit suggestions from the Discord, then we put it up to a vote, and the game with the most votes gets played live on stream sometime during the month. Now's your first chance to help shape what game I'll play this month on stream. I've had many, many successful and wonderful game votes in the past. Can't wait to see how this one turns out. Do I dare mess with an Elite right now? I have pretty good reasons to, actually. I'm going to do it. It might get me killed, but I really want the relic here. Hope this isn't too bad. Hmm. 
Tough choice already, huh? That helps a lot. I'm gonna discard the Wraith form, for better or for worse, we'll see. Blockpot helps a lot. For better, good. Keep Survivor neutralized. Okay, now we're gonna get attack next turn. There's comparatively little I can do about it. Fat Gremlin to be dead next turn. Achieve that with Neutralize, weaken you. I'm gonna be frail next turn, I don't like that. Could try to Ancient Potion, but I'm not gonna bother. Instead, I think I'm just gonna look for the Wraith form. There it is, good. So do I Ancient Potion this or no? I don't think I need to. Should be able to kill the leader pretty quickly from here. So we summon, and then hopefully there'll be another attack next turn. All the damage on the leader. All of it. Keep the auto attacks for the gremlins that are coming in. Hopefully the leader attacks me here, but it's not how it works. Good. Uh, do I want the wizard dead? No, I just want all the damage on the leader. I'm not dead yet! Worried you might do that. Better do 18 damage here. I think we got it. I would call that pretty close, though, as we're basically dead if we didn't get all the strikes in play there. Yikes. Not notably, the four damage from the neutralize completely mattered there. Ultimately, we get through the fight with only a couple of hit points lost, and we pick up a prayer wheel, an incredibly good reward. Normal enemies now drop an extra card reward, so plus one here, plus one here, plus one here. That's three card rewards this act alone. It's exciting. I don't think I'm going to mess with another elite fight. Do I take a second acrobatics? I do. I do. And I'll swap the ancient pot for the cutting pot. I will. Okay, now that we have two acros, I think the upgraded gamble is a huge deal. So that we can reuse that multiple times. And yeah, we're gonna keep going this way. Snick Blunt! Alright, turn one Wraith form. Here it is. Good luck to me. Boot would have been nice here. Wraithform will block two of these snake plants attacks no matter what. Which is good. Go fumes survivor. And I have one more turn here, and then consequences will be faced. Guess we can just use the block pot to unface them, though. We're clearly not killing. Works for me. Works for me. Well, let's make sure you actually die. Note our gold total, by the way.
Catalyst Plus, anyone? It's also a Bouncing Flask. And an Expertise for card draw. Sneaky Strikes here, too, if we want some damage. But yeah, Catalyst Plus looking really spicy. Triple the enemies, poison, and then add one to it. I'll take a Skill Potion over a Speed Potion, I think. Yeah, shame the Flask is uh, alongside it instead of in a different card reward, but I think we'll find some poison. We, we get four more card rewards here and here, followed by a shop before the boss. It's looking pretty good. We'll have about 30 health for the boss. That's hopefully going to be enough. If the flask was the upgraded one, would that be the pick over the catalyst? Upgraded flask versus unupgraded catalyst? I would take the flask here. Yeah, I would take the flask. Upgraded both, both versus upgraded. If they're both upgraded, I'll take the catalyst because of our boss, I think. Um, but if I was fighting Bronze Automaton, I might have to take the Bouncing Flask. Kind of fun how that goes. Oh, Potion Belt with our Alchemize. Amazing. Can hold on to more potions at the same time. Something we've definitely been feeling a need for already. And I'm thinking we should upgrade one of these Acros. But we could also consider upgrading the Alchemize to make it easier to play. Let's do that first. Alchemize Blues. Joining an MBA college, grats, Percy, pa Percy Paxson, on that successful joinage. Let's discard this. One, two, three, four. Retain these two. Figured you might. Gamble Defend. Might even have to use something fancy like make a potion to have more cards in hand and then gamble. Looks like we're good though. Just use the Wraith Form to win. Wraith Form so OP. Exactly three dazed. What if I do this instead? I'll draw exactly two dazed. Okay, it doesn't seem worth it. We've already played the Alchemize because it was free. That's right. That wasn't bad. All right, Bouncing Flask Plus. Okay. No, not so good there. Distraction could be a bouncing flask, but it's probably not. Generally speaking, I'm not too excited about unupgraded cards. If we were doing more physical attack damage, terror or phantasmal killer, or both, could be quite good. But since we're not, I don't think it's going to matter much. Hmm, these two are tricky. Too many artifact layers here. There's the well-laid plans, good. So plans. Leg sweep you, keep Wraith Form and Catalyst. Gotta get the fumes, there it is. Just Wraith Form and fumes. Feels appropriate, might even want to use the skill potion here. What about Envenom? I think Envenom would be okay here. Not amazing, because we don't have that many physical attacks, but uh, decent. Now, if I'd taken the Riddle with Holes, it'd be looking a lot better. Bullet time. Deal. Bullet time seems great here. And play this and everything else.
Four plus potion is decent. Twelve poison will kill you next turn. Damage this guy. With Venom Shivs or Multi Hits, an, an Eviscerate would be pretty good. Lay Dance would be pretty good. I've seen so many terrors. How about a Doppelganger? Next turn, draw X cards and gain X energy. Doppelganger can be good. Just don't know if it is. Needs an upgrade, which is not unreasonable to give it here. Let's do it. Not gonna take expertise. Not with uh, not with the well-laid plans. You've only removed one strike so far. That was our starting bonus. We're gonna remove another one momentarily here. As we roll into the shop with 597 gold, over 200 from the Maw Bank. Feels pretty good, and boy does this shop feel pretty good. I love what I see here. This is ideal. I see Apotheosis, I see Backflip, I see Card Removal, I see Mummified Hand. Jedido Janin, thanks for 30 months, 3 metric years, 30 flirty and feeling dirty. I hope you typed that on Dvorak instead of QWERTY. I see ceramic fish! Could consider a potion too. Not too bad. We were talking about cards that would be good with uh, Envenom. I totally skipped over this one. Flechettes, perhaps the single best silent card when it comes to hitting a large number of times. No card on silent can hit more than five times, except this one. Flechettes can hit up to nine times with one play, if you can manage to get flechettes and nine other skills in your hand. And in a deck with double acrobatics and a well-aid plans, it's not as hard as you might think. Oh, Skewer disagrees. That is true. Skewer actually can do it too. And Finisher. You know what? I, I walk back what I just said. There are other options. So currently I only have... Only have three powers? Okay, three powers is quite a few, actually. Let's do some math. If I go Apo, Mummy Hand, I don't think I can buy the backflip. Whereas I can do Apo, backflip, card remove, souvenir. And souvenir also blocks the debuff on the Wraith form. Oh, I love that. Is Apo worth it with coffee? I think it generally is. Uh, the big thing that Apo does that we really like is upgrade or defend cards to block for three more. Kind of like a footwork, but better. And it means we don't have to worry so much about flooding the deck with cards because of Prayer Wheel. Although it's true that most of our most important upgrades are already in play here. What if it's Mummy Hand, Souvenir, Backflip, Carter Move? How interesting. I think it's a valid argument for simply not buying a backflip, but this is a deck that would take two or three. Now, oh, there's so many good upgrades from this Apo. Let's do that and this. So 326. Three energy or block a debuff. Do you like block a debuff? Hey, glad to hear it, Enkidu. Standing desk has been great for my my own personal posture and health, I think. Very, very happy with it overall. I am gonna go souvenir backflip. I'll pay for that backflip. Let's see if I regret that, but I don't think I will. And that leaves us with some money for the next act, too, which is nice. We can save up towards our next quarter move or something. There's a lot of interactions between this and potions that we can get. That's also well pointed out. Oh my goodness, what a doppelganger. Just uh, draw me nine cards and nine energy next turn, please. Thanks. Seems pretty good. Been 
better. Still no sign of apotheosis, amusingly enough. We could wraith form early here. With our intangibility, there's not a whole lot of downside. I don't think we want to. Not yet. I, think I might use the swift potion here. There's Apotheosis, okay. I think all that's a plus. Can you... Poison goes here, area damage goes everywhere, and we defend. Using the Wraith form, which is completely fine. Very difficult to block with just defend cards, but... If you've got an Apotheosis, well, it's actually pretty doable. Block Weaken. Looks like we'll just do... Guaranteed to draw Wraith Form next turn. I guess that's what I'll plan around here. That seems completely fine. Have some poison. Nerd. I see through you. GG. This is looking pretty good. We're able to defeat collectors so decisively. We have a very good chances against the later game bosses. We've kind of gotten our silent run through what I consider to be the most difficult part of a run for Silent, which is Acts 1 and 2, where our short-term ability is tested. Especially now with two Wraith Forms, which I am going to take the second one. Second Alchemy is not bad with Potion Belt, but I'm taking the Wraith Form. Ever played Tainted Grail Conquest? I watched a little bit of that. Mechanically, as a deck builder, it looked interesting, but I had not the slightest interest in the sort of grimdark, gothic, all of our background effects or screams sort of vibe that it had. So I didn't like it as a stream game. Well, it's not, uh, not Sozu. And no longer obtain potions. Calling Bell gives us three relics, one common, one uncommon, one rare. That could be good. Or Busted Crown. Gain an energy at the start of our turn, but we have two less cards per card award. That means we'll lose out on more cards with Prayer Wheel, which is pretty bad. Four base energy silent can be a bit of a challenge. I think the apotheosis helps a lot. As the deck grows larger and larger, that one unremovable curse, not so bad. Generally speaking, I think as your deck gets bigger, the impact of curses and upgrades goes down. The impact of relics goes up. This is a very reasonable calling bell. I don't much like the downsides of these other two boss relics. Yeah, let's take the Culling Bell. What do you got? Curse. We get a Regal Pillow when we rest. Heal an extra HP. Question card means we have one more option in card rewards. Which means that regular enemies are going to look at eight cards. Two card rewards of four cards apiece. Which means we're going to see a lot of upgraded cards. Almost assuredly we can find uh, a Bouncing Flask or a Crippling Cloud now. Or another Catalyst. Or something. And Turnip making us immune to Frail. Don't uh, don't sleep on Turnip. It, it does have some decent utility. Now I am somewhat afraid of the Chosen One. Also think our path through the act is miserable. By and large. 
pillow, of course, does nothing with Ripper. I'd say that was a pretty underwhelming calling bell overall. Double block pot's nice. Punch the spikers. They love it. Sneaky Strike could be half decent. Upgraded Sucker Punch also half decent. I have a Leg Sweep, I don't need that. We're looking for Footworks. We're looking for Poison Cards. We're looking for Malaise and Piercing Whales. That's how I feel right now. This turnip I was sleep sleeping on has been the problem the whole time. You might secretly be a princess. I have to warn you. You know that tale, the princess and the turnip? I think it's an old gnomish fairy tale. Regen's good. Let's use that right now. This fight doesn't end until all three Darklings have been simultaneously slain. Which may or may not be easier said than done. Dang it. Thought you'd be dead this turn. You must die. Huzzah. All right. They've been dispatched. We're offered another calculated gamble. That's pretty good. We did talk about Eviscerate, and this one says Plus on it. That's pretty good, too. Uh, what else we got? Masterful Stab, Dash, Dash a Roll. So it's a question of, do I think I need this Eviscerate? Or do I want a Calculator Gamble? I think I just want another Calc Gamble. Especially with the uh, Apotheosis. There's the Malaise I've been waiting for. I might even purchase that over uh, card removal here. Malaise is a very, very big deal as it allows me to permanently sap strength from foes required in this deck as a way to get past um, the Awakened one, but also potentially Time Eater. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to buy this malaise. <laughs> Lots of money to pay out. We could exactly purchase Keltrops, too. How interesting. I've got a Catalyst, though, so I don't think I need a Keltrops. Huh. This is definitely the wrong time to take 999 gold. With an Apotheosis, it's also the wrong time to upgrade all of our cards. That means there's only one reasonable conclusion. We should fight a boss. Gamble 
it all. Upgrade it all, gamble it all again. This, this, this. And yes, Malay's the slime boss, just because we can. Give me a spooky ghost. I don't care about you, sir. That easy. Fumes will carry us. Rust Adam, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the QC sub club. with a pocket watch, which is huge for this build in particular. We play three or fewer cards during our turn. We gain an additional draw at the start of the next turn. Also huge is literally any poison card. And I will be taking this deadly poison, applies six, upgraded eight poison to one target. Perfect for tripling with catalyst. I'll take it. Maybe should have thought about that Sneko Oil, actually. Only play three. Pocket Watch is such a powerful draw engine. So many different, really good things that it can do. Oh, that's funny. Block him again. Easy. Oh, that's not how it works. Got it. Understood. tangible here. Just gotta block the 12 constrict though, or be a wraith for it. Either is fine. Third Cal Campbell might be too many. There's the bouncing flask. Perfect. Give me that. All right, now we have the poison cards we were looking for. One of each of these should be sufficient now for the late game. I want one more gamble. Want one more gamble with Pocket Watch. It's a tough call, actually. I'm going to keep it at two for now. But I could see it being useful. Double Orb Walkers are one of the more challenging fights in the game. You have to kill them very quickly before things get out of control, but if you win, you get a lot of money and a rare relic. Uh, I, for one, have plenty of potions that I'm willing to spend here. I'm going to use the Sneko Oil, actually. Let's see what happens here. Yeah. 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 Love it. Love it. Upgrade. Poison the one with the most health. Play this for free. Stab you. Go fumes or poison stab? I guess it's gotta be fumes. Fumes has to get in play here. Good job, Sneko Oil. You did it. You certainly did it. Whatever it is, whatever it might be, you did it. Yes to this, yes to this. Four times four is a lot of poison too. 
draw eight cards on our final intangible turn. So we've got two good potions to use. Brilliant. You're already essentially dying next turn, so we should catalyst the one with less uh, poison, with more health. Get rid of this. Ha 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 ha. Love to see it. Keep this. Poison you. Weaken you. Doppelganger. Keep this and this. Flawless fight overall. Beautiful. Simply beautiful. Is there a video for every achievement? I have one for getting all of them in the, at the same time, but most of the uh, achievements do have a, a video associated with them. Okuki says, have I ever done a challenge where I only get to get a certain number of relics? I don't think I've done anything quite like that. I've done challenges where I have to limit myself to a certain number of cards, but not to a certain number of relics. Skip the Cultist Potion. Okay, glad this is Giant Head and not, oh, I don't know, Reptomancer. Um, it's gonna use my artifact, huh? That's fine. for this later as well, I guess. Or I'll use it here, actually. Seems like a good time to use my energy potion. Or I could not, actually. I'll do it, I'll do it. Still chaos. Have fun being poisoned. Time to run out the clock. Don't even need the second Wraith form, but I'll play it anyway. That's right, All Achievements does require getting to Ascension 20, which is part of what uh, makes that All Achievements run so long. Calendar. We can definitely stall out for that, so that probably helps a little bit damage-wise. One more Piercing Whale, I think, rounds out this deck perfectly. Two Piercing Whales, two Wraith Forms, one Malaise. Should give us all the answer we need to Awaken One, Time Eater, and uh, Shield and Spear, I'm also thinking of with the two Piercing Whales here. Heart, of course, too. Heart's less of a concern, though. Really not worried about heart with this deck. We just need to get to heart and we'll, we'll beat the heart. No problem. No problem at all. Oh, a glowing tesseract. We have question cards. So each of these will offer us four colorless cards. And we would love card draw like secret technique, master of strategy, impatience even would be very good in this deck, too. Any of those. Yeah, impatience is here. Panic button, not bad. Finesse is okay. No dexterity though. Dark Shackles is great. Sadistic Nature is here. Whenever you apply a debuff to an enemy, they take damage. We're doing that uh, often enough for it to be substantial. Like all of these are debuff cards, every single one of them. 
Purity could get rid of some unwanted cards, strikes and defends and such. The Curse of the Bell we could get rid of. And with the draw from Pocket Watch, it's not completely unreasonable. Rosazog says, been able to get all the achievements except common cards only. I've got a video for ya. Uh, what's it called? Common Sense. A video on that one, too. Double Impatience Grand Finale deck. That sounds amazing. Do you like that purity? Maybe we'll go uh, Impatience, Purity. This one's tough. It's either Shackles or Nature. Is there a master strategy in here? No, there's no master strategy here. That's the thing ahead. Master strategy would be basically the best card, but <clears throat> that is not a master strategy, unfortunately. I wish it was. Okay, let's do it. Let's try the purity. I don't know if that's going to be useful in a 38 card deck, but we're going to find out. Do I want the damage? Nah, we'll take one more Shackles. We've got the Catalyst for damage. It'll be fine. Probably. There's finally the thing that lets the Coffee Dripper be infinitely sustainable. No problem there. Ooh-wee, what a turn one. Although, yikes. Guess that's what the Block Pot's for, hey? I think we should just start this out with a ton of poison, by which I mean 37 on the Nemesis here. And heck it, I'll use both block potions. I don't give a heck. Probably shouldn't have played the thingies. This is fine, though. turns. Always get new potions, easily enough. Get him, Stone Calendar. That even hack activates before the burns kick in. That's kind of neat. One more acro. Or one last chance at terror. Don't really have that much energy is the problem with a third acrobatics. If I had a tactician. Can't believe how many terrors we've seen. It's been uh, truly absurd at this point. Transient. Well, uh, transient would be more of an issue if I didn't have six turns of intangible in the deck. Let's see if we can just do that. Hello, yes. Please make me intangible. Hmm. It's gonna be like that, huh? All right. Easy. Dead-ish, anyway. Good enough for me.
For Transient to do zero damage, you must simply have your own damage exceed Transient's that turn. So for the final turn, if you do 90 or more damage, Transient will deal zero. There. All right, well, I found the tactician I wanted. This card is discarded from your hand. Gain two energy. Yes, please. Now I do wish I had third acrobatics, or maybe third calculated gamble. But still, this should be plenty good for us. A little bit of boost there. And uh, none of this, please. We see 24 cards in the next three floors, by the way. That's crazy. Simply crazy. Fusion go. Flip plus, not bad. Reflex, also very good. I think I'm going to take the reflex. Given our ability to discard, reflex will simply be even more card draw for us. And I could take another backflip if I want. Is there a better relic combo than prayer wheel with question card? Prayer wheel with singing bowl? Prayer wheel with uh, toxic molten or frozen egg can also be very, 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 very good. Tungsten Rod with Tori. Also a very good one. Mall Bank and Bloody Idol. It's a fun combo, too. Skate Plan is kind of free block in the deck. No, not with Pocket Watch. It's not. No. We don't want to play in excess of cards, as it may impede our own ability to draw cards. Uh, in fact, I'm just not going to play any more of these at all, for that reason. Okay, discard this. Play. Hmm, I'd better be ready to kill this thing if I need to. Draw 10. Alright, no killing required. Good. Potions restored, that's also good. At this point, we just wait till uh, Stone Calendar kills them. Get him, Stone Calendar. Good job. Tools of the trade. A start of your turn, draw one, discard one. Helps us get through the deck more quickly, makes the tactician and reflex a lot more likely to be useful. And the world's tenth terror this run. That's crazy. Poopy Face and Poopster asks, will the Spiker do damage to you if Stone Calendar hits them? No, only damage from attack cards will be reflected back to you. So any direct damage from relics or powers or anything like that, like Panache wouldn't hurt you, Thousand Cuts wouldn't hurt you. If it's not from an attack card, you won't be taking damage. 
use the explosive potion. I'm going to keep both the Sneka Oil and the energy potion. And because I'm a rebel, I'm going to go this way. Uh-oh. Take back my rebellious nature. Have mercy. Please have mercy. Keep this and let me with this. Writhing Mass changes their attack intent every time they take damage, which may or may not be a good thing. Depending. Party over. Okay. Just those. About this. Stick of oil. How much do I trust stick of oil? Each of pots nice for blocking a wraith form against support or something. Okay, I'll use the energy pots. Block pot, that's fine. So my usual rule of thumb for this enemy is, especially with a deck like this, don't hit them unless they're doing something you can't deal with. You can deal with their intent, just don't play any attacks. It's just not worth it. The chance of being cursed or whatever. Uh, let's lose that. Go here, discard that. Get rid of all the attack cards. Draw more for free. Easy. We win next turn. Actually, really liking the Tactician now that we have it. This is okay. Still no Dexterity. <laughs> Two of them? Interesting. Still no Dexterity, though, so I don't think I'm going to bother. Of course, we're going to get a Speed Potion with the Ancient stuff eventually, probably. Be funny. I think we can skip these card rewards. Mm. Nothing amazing here. Interesting to me that we haven't seen a singular footwork this whole run, so I'm glad we've got two Wraith Forms and a bunch of Strength Down effects as our block strategy. I am a little worried about how long it's going to take me to kill the Awakened One, but with the malaise, it shouldn't be a problem. We drew the malaise on turn one. Let's see, 10 extra card awards, 21 extra cards, wow. I think this is just gonna be malaise block potion. I need to make sure the strength reduction is as potent as possible, given how many powers I'm going to play. Then we draw 10 here. Gotta get rid of these birds, as they're going to be very powerful very quickly. Oof. This is not an ideal turn. Can't delete fumes. I think we got to play it. I'm going to use Snack Oil here. Delete that three cost strike. Go to Acrobatics. Perfect. Uh, neutralize isn't worth paying two for now, is it? It's really not. I'm not going to play this yet. Just discard that for now. This. This. Delete all three of these. Actually, just two. Keep one of these. Play this as well. Take some damage here. Birds have got to go. I'm even willing to catalyst a bird because I'm scared. Currently.
I think it's time to use this. Give the Awakened One some strength, though. No, I need to play the Will Aid plans. Looking up. This is looking way up. Okay. <laughs> Seize their command for that. I think we have a command for the piercing whale thing. But I'll talk about that uh, when we get there, and we probably will use that here. Uh, let's just bonk you, and then block. Block like that. Easy. Uh, which means we can go stab on attack. I think we have control of the fight now, and the fact that we have meat on the phone is going to make it easier. Next fight should be easier than this one. I think. I hope. Deeply, deeply hope. Get him, stone calendar. You can do it. Bomb, thanks for five months of support. Almost to that half year. Keep on keeping on. Uh-oh. Okay, we're good. Um... Yeah, I'll just use this now. Keep the shackles for... Later. Alright, now I think I can play the tool, since we're going to remove that uh, artifact anyway, or whatever. Although it will actually give additional stuff right now. Still fine. Take one. I'm cool taking one, I guess. Alright, so on the turn that the first phase of the Awakened One dies... If you lower their strength with any sort of temporary strength down effect, like Dark Shackles, then what happens is, when the boss dies, only their current strength is tested. Boss's negative 11 strength and the Shackled effect at the start of the turn gain 15 strength back. Only the negative 11 strength is what's checked, and so we get to... permanently remove strength from the boss. Wicked One will reset their strength to, to zero if they had lower than that, but what they can't do is keep the positive strength they used to have. Keep gambling. That's right, the heart works differently because the heart never actually clears debuffs, just strength down, which results in the opposite intended effect. Again, 
fear now. We've got another Wraith form if we need it. It's right there. Not that I think we do necessarily need it. I'm a ghost now, have fun. See you later, Nerdbird. GG. Okay, good. We're through our first boss of two. I think we can very reasonably do another one here. It is the Time Eater. Best bested. Catalyst stuff. Oof, that's a bit of an icky turn one, though. Every 12 cards we play, Time Eater will automatically end our turn. So I'll take five more health here. This blocks the. Let's use this. Actually, no, I've already got one. Let's hold off on that. Locks the drawdown, which is quite nice. Stinky time eater. Need to find my well laid plans. There they are. Good. Keep, yeah, these two. by three. Okay, Piercing Whale can put a stop to that. Good. Three by three. The goal here is to stack poison until we can use Catalyst to kill Time Eater outright. We shouldn't have to deal with a two-phased fight here. I don't think. Do I Ancient Potion? I think so. I don't think I need two of these. next turn as well. So the turn time meter drops below 240. That's when they'll purge. It's going to be, what, 127, 278, 51. That should be good enough, actually. If we Catalyst right now, that should be basically perfect. As that puts Time Eater just above the half health threshold for this turn, which means Time Eater takes full poison damage on this turn, full poison damage on next turn. And before they heal next turn, they should just die. So here's where Time Eater would remove all poison and all debuffs and then heal back to half HP, but that can't happen if they die. So dying they shall do. Not much point in playing cards here. Get him, Stone Calendar. Oh, I didn't even do the math on Calendar. Good job. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread could be felt throughout the room is this. The heart of the spire, the source of all this poison. 300 extra poison applied from Sneko Skull since we purchased it very early in this run. I have to say it's been a very, very good relic overall. Very pleased with it so far. We've even got enough money to buy one last relic in the shop or a decent potion or something. And we're not even missing that many hit points, which is nice because I'm not allowed to rest here. 
I can either upgrade a specific card. Upgrading this Wraith form is reasonable. Upgrading Reflex or Malaise is reasonable. Or we could lift for one point of strength to make sure that our attacks do very, very slightly more damage. Really doesn't seem that worth it, though, considering how few attacks I actually have. Let's upgrade something. Gamble is also a good upgrade. Upgrade the Gamble. That way I can play these to get to the Apotheosis faster. Farting Bird says, have I ever forgotten the keys? It's happened one time. Hopefully only ever one time. But yeah, I, I have totally forgotten. I think each of the keys about one time. Love that there's another Bouncing Flask here. Love that there's a Poison Potion here. Waffle is decent, giving us some more health to work with. Card removal's pretty good. One less strike. It's always nice. Ah. Key that feels worst, worst to forget for me is the red key, because you had the chance right before the final boss to do it. Yes, I did. I did once intentionally skip the blue key because it enabled me to get Dead Branch Corruption on Silence. That's right. I was like, okay, we can either win this, we can either make this a heart kill, or I can have Dead Branch Corruption on a non-ironclad character right now. And I decided the fun was the better pick, and I think that worked out really well. I had a blast. This is also a deck that might even want two well-laid plans. Not gonna lie. Uh, a 40 card deck. It's really important that we see one of the well-laid plans early, so having two gives us a backup of sorts, which I quite like. I'm gonna do that. Let's buy this. So is it flask removal or waffle? I can't do waffle poison potion, huh? I should buy a potion. Thinking Ahead could do some interesting stuff. Heck, Enlightenment could do some interesting stuff. So could Energy Potion over Poison Potion. Yeah, I am thinking uh, Potion and Remove, personally, over the Waffle here. Lose a Strike by one of these three potions. I have to imagine b Poison Potion's better than Bouncing Flask. Let's do that. Oh, I could even swap one of these potions. Power or Energy over Ancient Potion. Ancient seems important for hearts. Draw seems important too. Okay, keep it as we have. Luigi Head, what is the corrupt heart's favorite flavor of gum? Spire Spearmint. Hmm, it's a pretty good draw potion actually. We have Apotheosis, Alchemized Tools in the opening hand. Let's see what's a little further down. Oh, play Apotheosis first, because there's only eight cards in hand. Always get more potions, after all. Ooh, that's a good one. Fairy in a bottle, if we would die, heal to 30% health instead. And there's well-laid plans. Perfect. Just perfect. Lands, defend, keep shackles and whale, or gamble and something. If I keep shackles and whale, I can use the poison potion, the shackles, and the whale to shut down the spire spear next turn. But we will be attacked by the spire shield, too. Laser B10, thanks for seven months of the prime sub. Welcome. Thanks for keeping it cozy. Let's do these two. Although Gamble to discard the burns for real cards could be pretty appealing. We have a 10 card hand here. Oh. Interesting. Discarding Reflex right now only draws one. Might be the only chance to discard it meaningfully, though. Like that we got Malaise here.
Hmm. Like this. There's Wraith Form. Deadly Poison. Surety that burn. This would be a reasonable amount of damage. So I'm currently thinking deadly here, piercing whale here. Or maybe deadly. No, I got a malaise. I could do deadly here. Malaise here. Uh, sorry, deadly here. Piercing whale here. No, it doesn't work. Huh? Malaise has to go on the spire spear. Nine. Could take a little bit less by turning around with a poison potion. Doesn't seem worth it. That should be enough health for the heart, I think. Now we can do crazy stuff. Like Wraith Form. Well laid plans number two. Gamble. Play Bouncing Flask. Alright, you're dying first. It is decided. So take three more, huh? Mm. So you're dead. And Build your own runic pyramid complete. That's right. Get him. Attempt your best to contribute, Stone Calendar. You can do it. A bottled tornado, allowing me to choose a power card to have in my opening hand. Interesting. Could bottle our well-laid plans so that we guarantee to have well-laid plans on turn one. The other thing I'm considering is bottle our upgraded wraith form so that I can just use our initial artifact to ignore the first three turns of the heart fight. And then we have no dexterity down for the rest of the fight because of that. I imagine that's pretty good. What about the card war? Hello. Concentrate plus looking real good, especially. Although the tactician's not bad either. Could take more poison, too. Just a, just a deadly poison so that we can get to 200 poison on the heart more quickly. Actually, very, very reasonable. This is a bit more energy costly. Take a deadly. It's kind of basic, but it'll do the job. 
Do I keep this Ancient Potion? Now that I know that I'm drawing a Wraith Form turn one. It's not going to be Fumes turn one. I'm drawing Wraith Form turn one. I don't necessarily need this Ancient Potion because I don't care about the Vulnerable anymore. Nor do I care about the debuff from the second Wraith. Okay, let's take the Colorless instead. is more or less perfect. We go deflect, wraith form, doppel, draw 10 next turn. Perfect. Excellent time to draw purity. I can delete Strike, Curse the Bell, and Burn. All at the same time here. It's not the perfect purity, but it's going to be good enough to suffice here. Please delete these cards. Draw new ones in their stead. Let's use this now. Actually, let's use both of these now so that I can use the Entropic Brew. don't need the malaise right now, so I'm not going to use it. There's Apotheosis. And all the other stuff. Let's go sweep. Apotheosis. Tools. Upgrade the poison. Keep these two cards. No, don't keep anything. Apparently the well-laid plans were all on the bottom. I'm cool with that. Discard one of these plans. It hurts, but I'm doing it. Catalyst next turn. Perfect. About 150 poison. You do better than that. Max it out. Keep my ultra block. Easy. Easy, easy. Defend. Flask. Shackles. Deadly. Easy. Get in there for 15 stone calendar. It's actually just enough to get the kill right now. GG. Simply destroyed. Mr. Hart. Destroyed. Can't believe we're up to eight in a row. That's crazy good. GG, everybody. GG. Now, what has it been done? The spire sleeps, and so shall I. GG. GG. 43 card special. Gotta say, this is some of my favorite uh, type of silent deck to play. Lots of poison, lots of card draw. And lots of ways to deal with enemy damage. GG.
Actually, 16? Hmm. This one, I'd heard 17. Do I think I could beat the 38 game record on Watcher if I put the time into it? No. <laughs> I could maybe do 30. I think I would I think I would go insane trying to get to 40. But my best on silent is is over 20. I don't feel like I have anything to prove on the character. So I don't feel particularly motivated to attempt to um, do particularly long win streaks with Watcher. I know and I've proven that I'm capable of 95% plus win rate if I want to by executing on some some very well polished strategies from the community. Merle did go insane getting those 38 wins. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah, even if even if I say, let's say I did a, a two-hour average on those Watcher runs, which is pretty generous, that'd be 80-plus hours of content. It's a lot. It's a lot. And he's, some say he's still insane to this day. Yeah, what if you get to 30 and lose? How do you how do you summon the motivation to start anew? I'd be like, well, 30 is pretty good. I'm happy with that. Let's let's do something else now. <laughs> That's right. In the in the words of my own YouTube editor, try to make your watcher runs as hard as yourself as hard on yourself as possible for maximum entertainment. Now, I don't say that I uh, strictly adhere to that advice, but there's definitely a little bit of it. You'll occasionally see me try things like pressure points. We've done alpha, beta, omega decks, signature move runs, a whole lot else. And it has led to occasionally losing on Watcher for runs that were totally winnable in other ways. But I like the experimentation. I like the learning process. We are going to be doing another run. Next up is going to be the defects. Our robot in blue. Before I do that, I'm going to take a quick break, refill my legs, stretch my water. And when I return, it's defect time. BRB folks, don't go nowhere.
Alrighty, folks. Thank you for that patience. I cannot wait to see how this defect run goes. He back. He bought. He bought a defect. I would say the defect might be the hardest character of the four to learn in Slay the Spire. Defect is as the thematic for a robotic character, I would say the defect is the most computationally intense character. And that's because the defect has a lot of different reasons to care about the order in which cards are played, which results in many, many possible moves for the player during a regular turn of combat with many, many different consequences as well. Further adding to this is a frustrating layer of randomness. You're starting damage output with lightning orbs targets random enemies. So as soon as you're fighting two or more enemies, you have an added layer of unpredictability for some amount of your damage. And for any run where you don't trade away your starting relic, that's always gonna be here on your defect runs, constantly confounding, baffling, or otherwise befuddling. Any attempt to... Oh man, this act one looks insanely good. Holy moly. Wait a minute. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're going to be in for a good time. I am excited. Roll says, hardest to master too. I don't feel like anyone has really done it to the degree that the other characters have been. I think I would agree with that. And it's for the reason I mentioned. The Defect is a computationally intense character. With the other characters, there's been an, an increasing level of success found by really analyzing and kind of spreadsheeting everything that you can do uh, in a given moment. And, you know, addressing all the pathing options, addressing all the purchasing options, taking a look at all the different lines you could take through a turn of combat. And I think what happens is that the defect is not directly more mechanically complicated, but has more complicated interactions between those mechanics and again, more, more possible lines of play during a single turn to the extent where you can only look at a small subset of all of your options, no matter how much time you allocate to the task. And for that, you have to, I think, go old fashioned. How do you complicate how do you, in software, deal with, how do you tackle a problem that is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly complex without having an equation that necessarily fits it? I would say you use a neural net, use a learning algorithm, and that's the approach to defect. You have to use the human neural net, learning by experience, in order to start to recognize the most efficient paths for the defect. And man, are there some weird choices you can make on this character from, I think, starting with Meteor Strike as a, a valid win con to decks that make heavy use of madness to uh, 50 card specials to everything in between. The defect has so many odd odd ways to win with a, where a slight variation to the left or right will lose. Almost seems to me like on the other characters you have these kind of broad directions you can grow in, like poison and wraith form. It doesn't really matter what the exact mixture of those two is. They'll kind of win together nicely on silent. Um, or you can on ironclad path in the direction of max health and strength. And again, any decent mixture of that will win. But on the defect, <clears throat> you have like this radial circle of separated options where they're not at all connected to each other, but any specific ratio of the right pieces will achieve a victory. It's really hard to wrap your head around. Thinking about more tangible things, I 
completely agree. Of our starting options, remove two is insane. And that is partially because some of those isolated win conditions for the defect involve very, very small, refined decks that play the same card over and over again. But also, in general, I really like just having a smaller deck and uh, fewer starter cards on Defect. Defect has so many ways to get damage and block that are both way more efficient than the starter cards. So it seems to me like any amount of starter removal is going to be good. I like that... Uh, MTG. Apparently, Seknar is big on just grabbing a reprogram because maybe it becomes your win con later in the run. Yeah, that feels about right for Defect. That feels about right. I think it's a card I, I could be exploring more, especially because it, it goes so naturally with cards that my playstyle already picks up in spades, namely Rebound and Hologram. Okay, <clears throat> so if I'm removing two, I think the path that I'm looking at here is something akin to this. No, not there. Well, maybe there. But we get three encounters and an upgrade to deal with uh, a first elite. If we get through that, we get a rest site, and then the option for another elite and a shop, and then another elite. Or if we're suffering, we can opt out of some of that, get to a rest site. In either case, so we'll mark that in green here. Mark these options in red. The harder path. Is there anything else that looks reasonably appealing? We could go through this series of three. Early shop could help with that. <laughs> Definitely like hitting a shop here in act one if possible to sort of capitalize on the removals we're gonna start with. Um, we'll choose to remove two strikes initially. And any additional removals we can get will be very good. So hi in chat asks, am I going for the true ending? Every run on this channel is an attempt to defeat the hearts in Act 4 on Ascension 20, yes. That guy says, what would it take for me to get in rewards to fight the Burning Elite with no upgrades? I'd say we probably need a Sunder or Doom and Gloom as an attack card and a damage potion like a Fear Potion or a Fire Potion. We could also take the Burning Elite if we got a... Uh, what's the Darkness Potion called? Essence of Darkness, I think? The potion that would channel three dark orbs at the same time. That would be sufficient to kill any elite. Gremlin Knob or Legavulin. Or the sentries. It's one of the most powerful potions in the game, I hold. Up there with Ghost in a Jar for what it can potentially do. But even beyond that, in Act 1. Anyway, let's let's take our two strikes out of the deck. I think other characters can suffer a little bit damage-wise if two strikes are removed immediately, but the defect, thanks to Zamp and Dual Cast, can do plenty of damage, uh, even as they are. Yeah, I don't think any other path here is that reasonable. Could like a couple upgrades, fight one elite. That's pretty bad. Trying to fight two elites before two rest sites is pretty tricky. I don't really like opening with two events like this, but uh, I definitely don't want to do that. Yeah, I think this is the right path. Zap and dual cast, dual cast and zap. That's all we need, really. It's going to be so very much damage output. Let's see, go to 24. Yeah. Said it before, but it bears repeating. Most characters cannot get away with blocking for six against the cultist on turn two. 
usually skipping a strike here will result in suffering more later in the cultist fight because the this enemy's strength will scale out of control. But the defect does so much damage with the starting deck and the crack core that you can ignore that and just kill the cultist while blocking every point of damage. And speaking of damage, we have three fantastic damage-related cards to consider here. Most of the time, that's right. If you if you uh, didn't draw damage on turn one, then you probably need to get it back by not shorting yourself damage further. Or if you didn't draw a zap on turn one or something like that. Almost works every time, that's right. But as always, consider the the exact contents of the draw and discard pile at all times. That's another thing that bears repeating that I don't say often enough. Always be looking at your draw pile. Always be looking at the discard pile. Consider what your odds are of drawing X, Y, or Z next turn or two turns from now. And if you have knowledge of enemy patterns, you can also therefore understand how that will interact with what your enemy is going to do next turn or two turns from now. Having removed two is a almost reasonable situation to take Claw in. I'm very, very happy with a Ball Lightning here, though. We want a, a solid damage card to get through our first Elite with. Uh, and we're going to want a damage card that will perform well against the Slime Boss, and Ball Lightning is both of those things. Claw can be fun and powerful. I, I personally think Claw is stronger if you open with something like a card manipulation card. First pick Rebound, first pick Hologram into second pick Claw. Or even first, first pick Cool Headed in a pinch. Although I don't really recommend that you do first pick Cool Headed. Generally. Of course, the question is always, what's it up against? Hmm. Dual cast, don't fail me now. Thank you. And a boot. All right, very easy louse fight there. Very comfortable. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. Second claw. Now, two claws out of the gate with remove two is a, a quite a start that we could have had in that particular direction. Uh, I don't think I'm going to pick up this one either. Instead, I'm looking for a card that goes with the ball lightning in some fashion. Compound River is not bad. Deal seven, draw one. And if we pick up a frost orb, it becomes better. I'm also eyeing this white noise oddly early. A random power can be a lot of different things on defect, but... Most of them are very good if you've got orbs in play. And that's the pick I want to make here. An early white noise. Personally, I tend to find that white noise creates exactly the card I want most of the time. No, that's not true. has an uncanny ability to, to get me out of tough situations, is how I feel about it. Can't believe we're offered... Can't believe we're offered a, another early removal here. Minus one more strike means the deck is even further refined. I tend not to like removing a defend until I've gotten a better block card on the defect. But we do want to maybe consider Gremlin Knob as a possibility. One more of these gone. So this is the current deck. Radically shrunk down already. A little bit disincentivized to visit a store now, but it's uh, not required anyway. 
Let's get two more card rewards and then consider our position here. I'm hoping we also get a potion, potentially. So our upgrade is dual cast. Our upgrade will probably be ball lightning. Uh, unless I find something better to upgrade shortly, which certainly might happen. We have two more, two more card rewards. Don't forget. I don't think I get to block three times here, but I'm considering it. What do you got? Okay. Break's not too bad with three orbs in play. Approximately as good as Loop would have been. We do get a potion. And we get some interesting options here. Cold Snap gives us a Frost Orb. That would have been amazing with the Compile Driver. Defragment for Focus or Charge Battery. Pretty tempting to grab the defrag, but feels more correct to take Cold Snap at the moment. So that we actually have our first Frost Orb. That said, focus is very hard to find on the defect. So taking sources of it when you can can be pretty helpful. It's also, with this Ball Lightning and our starting relic, a pretty substantial increase to our damage in even the Gremlin Knob fight to take this defrag right now. Also gives us, yes, a very good upgrade. I'd be a little bit worried if we take defragment and run into the sentries though. Unless of course white noise bails us out there. Can't be convinced to take charge battery here with what could be gremlin knob staring us down. That would be too much block. So I think this is either Cold Snap or Defrag. Take the Defrag. Let's see if I regret that. Definitely play this. So Defrag will currently give us two damage per turn, but one more orb will give us three damage per turn. So it might be better to play Zamp than Defrag at the moment. For that third orb, a good highlight of how powers can actually be rather inefficient uh, if they're not improving your cards enough or you're not playing enough cards after them. That should be 4-4. Four, four. If I dual cast, I won't be dual casting though. So I'll be doing four per turn or uh, eight per turn or nine per turn. Although the bonus is if we play the defrag, we don't draw the defrag again. And I think that's a good reason to play it then. Since I do plan on going block heavy here. What do you got, White Noise? Hmm. Does this kill? Always an important question to ask yourself. Uh, if we zap Ball Lightning Strike, we would deal 5, 9 from the Evoke, 4, and then 12. I'm sure that's enough. Let me just do the math, though. 9 plus 5 plus 4 plus 12 is 30. Yes. Easy kill there with the three offensive cards. Easy to, I think, at first glance to get tricked into blocking twice here. But upon a review, there is a kill here. All right. Not my favorite potion here. Potion of capacity. More orb slots. Not necessarily something that's good on this character. When you channel an orb, it goes into the first available orb slot, but if all your orb slots are full, you'll instead evoke the orb for an additional numerical effect immediately. 
And sometimes that's exactly what you want to do. Spire is a game where, especially on the higher difficulties, it's really important to emphasize the short game uh, over a lot of the time the long game because you are put into combats that are threatening all the time in this game. You must be able to answer the deck checks immediately. You have to be able to output numeric value with your deck immediately and at all stages moving forward. Adding extra orb slots, especially if you're spending card draw and or extra energy on that, is spending resources to delay, but eventually scale, your numeric output. Great in boss fights, but in any fight short of a boss fight, potion of capacity can really be a pain. Rather tempted by discharge here. The only problem is slime boss really doesn't respect static discharge that much. Uh, but if we were fighting Hexaghost, I'd be really tempted. One of my favorite powers, there's a lot of utility for this character. Uh, and it combos really well with our defrag already, leaning us heavily into uh, a lightning spam sort of damage output. Toaster King says, how do you feel about multiple electrodynamics cards? The power doesn't stack, but three upgraded lightnings for two energy. If you've got uh, storm or heat sinks going on, I could I could see it. A little problematic against uh, the Awakened One boss, potentially, or in any fight where you've only got one enemy, potentially. But if you can get five or six lightning orbs out of it, or bonus card draw, I say it's totally good. So, considering our short term here, we've got an upcoming Elite, we've got Slime Boss later. Uh, I think we want to focus on a, a damage card, which is either going to be Streamline, a card that gets cheaper each time it's played, pretty good up front, or this FTL, five damage and one draw. I like to think of FTL as sort of a free strike, doesn't take up slot in the deck. Um, and we'll be drawing it quite frequently, given how small the deck is. Just a bonus five damage every other turn or so. I think that improves us quite a bit. Not quite as good as Streamline, but um, much better later. And I'm very, very happy with this. I think that's my personal pick, is this FTL. It's almost as much damage as Streamline, although it's not as good of an upgrade as Streamline. We'll be upgrading the Defragment anyway. And taking our two very awkward potions into what I'm hoping is not a Gremlin Up fight. We'll see. Dang it. Okay, this is a bit of an emergency now. My best elite, says Merle. Well, I could see how sentries could go really badly for us. Um, but I don't like that. Not with these potions, I don't think Gremlin Nub is our best matchup. I think Lagavulin would be our best in any event, I'm thinking about using the skill potion now, looking for an offensive skill. My hope would be Rainbow, but I would also be okay with Tempest. Um, Skim, Cool-Headed, Darkness, Seek. Or Seek. Seek would let me play White Noise right now, which feels a lot better. That's the only card I really want to get in play that is a skill here. Other option would be take the Defrag so that we would do more damage this turn, but the White Noise might improve our damage in a couple of ways. Could be a Storm or something. I guess we could look at all of the different possibilities one at a time, but I really don't want to do that. I'm just going to grab this, based on instinct, if nothing else. But what about multicast? With multicast, we could... Problem is, uh, it's an X-cost card, right? I want to play Zap and Strike already. I don't even only have one energy, so that would be evoking lightning for one time. That's not going to be worth it. What do you got, White Noise? 
Creative AI. Okay, well, that may or may not end up being good for us. We'll see. We'll see. Only one way to find out. Okay, promising. Promising. Static gives us an extra lightning orb without being a skill. So we get to go defrag, static, ball lightning. And again, we don't want orb slots because we'd rather the lightning orb get evoked immediately. Get him. And then an echo form. Okay, well, we're probably not going to use that. But I don't think it matters because it looks like we have a kill here. We certainly do. Cool. I'll take it. Labana, thanks for 18 months. BB Tech, thank you so much for 31 months of support. Hydroxy PH in chat. What do you say when you see a guy run by you holding a lot of mangoes? Look at that man go. We got 14 max HP. That is a lot. One of my favorite relics to find on Defect especially for the extra chonkitude. And would you look at that? Second copy of Ball Lightning pairing with our Defragment is going to be extra blap. The ultra blapitude. There that man goes. Oh, I love that even more. Chud125 says, bad dad jokes. Oh yeah, the, the bad is implied. We just, we just call them dad jokes to save everybody time. Because there is no such thing as a good dad joke. I think you could also justifiably take rebound here, by the way, to let us put FTL on top or to let us put ball lightning on top for FTL to fetch. But uh, I'll take that. Okay, and we're going to path towards the shop. I feel ultra confident in just destroying whatever this next elite is. We could upgrade an energy card right now. Upgrading Zap, Dual Cast, or White Noise. And those are all interesting possibilities. Could either other up reasonable upgrade is to upgrade Ball Lightning. Or uh, just a flat plus three on our best attack. Hmm. Yeah, upgrading dual cast is pretty pretty spicy with three lightning channels of the deck. So again, so is so is the zap upgrade. Although I tend to find the dual cast upgrade does does scale better into late game. Will we want to remove zap eventually? We might. Although again, you could say the same of dual cast too. Depends. Are we going to take a Thunderstrike later this run? Maybe I do upgrade White Noise. I know it's only once per combat, but this is consistently a card I want to play whenever I draw it. I'm going to do it. And we're going to go for two elites here, for sure. My, my. This is the Gremlin Horn. Very, very good relic. Again, on this character especially. Whenever an enemy dies, we get an energy and draw a card, which I think is fantastic. Just fantastic. All right, we're going to be sneaky here. Don't wake up the egg yet. Not yet either. I want to go now. What do you got? Capacitor. Hmm. Well, that's extra useless, but thank you. Guess for that reason, I won't play the dual cast. This fight will go on long enough that uh, rather than channeling some instant damage, we should just get more lightning orbs here. 
We'll be blocking with defense where we can. And letting the lightning orbs slay this thing quickly. I think we can play three defense this turn. Or is it two and one ball lightning? Hmm. Two ball two and one ball lightning, actually. We're only doing ten per turn currently. Fifteen per turn will end this pretty quickly. Yeah, I'm thinking two and one. Three defends a little too greedy there. Maybe if we had a charge battery. Now we can do three. Let me draw all the lightning on the off turn. Perfect. Yeah. Get him. Uh, we just kill this. Easy. Satisfying, too. Shuriken is a cool find. Uh, now we're probably incentivized to pick up a barrage. Shuriken says if we play three attacks in one turn, gain a point of strength making all of our attacks do more damage. Relatively difficult to activate because we only have four attacks in the entire deck. But zero cost draw one FTL does contribute and so does zero cost beam cell. That said, there's also a strong contender here in genetic algorithm. Giving us block and scaling permanently. That one could be pretty good too, especially taken this early. Although it'll be very sad in that next elite fight. Algorithm quickly becomes a powerhouse of a card. And we are at the point where we would like to take um, another block card, especially as I might consider removing a defend shortly. Let's see. Get a shop, elite, and if I take the red path, we'll even get two more combats to scale it in. And I have 45 hit points currently. Okay. I'm reasonably convinced by a genetic here. Do we have had three compile drivers? Do I see that correctly? Interesting. Shop is awkward with our gold amount. Probably just going to remove a card. Which almost could be Zap already. Don't know that I want to get rid of the last strike at this moment. Yeah, no, we need that strike for whatever we're fighting. With the defrag, we should keep Zap. So yeah, actually, probably remove a basic defend, especially considering Slime Boss. We want all the damage that we have. Do I add a Compile Driver even though it only draws one? I mean, I'll probably add a Frost card at this point. Controller Man says, do rare or uncommon potions shimmer in the shop only or when also if they're in the belt? They don't shimmer in the belt. Our potion of capacity here is an uncommon. Fun little fact, actually, for if you haven't noticed, um, potions, I think also that are on the ground, uh, and potions that are in shops, have a shimmer that shows their rarity. We've got one of each here in the shop. Dexterity potion, a common potion, no shimmer. Liquid memory is an uncommon potion, shimmers with silver dots. And Smoke Bomb, a rare potion, shimmers with gold stars. Chaos not good? I think Chaos is great, but problem is Chaos and card removal is not a thing. Likewise, if I could afford it, I would buy auto shields now. Uh, but I can't, so I haven't even talked about it. But that would be my, my personal choice right now, is add a immediately useful, really good block card. And hopefully we'll get that shortly, is an immediately useful, really good block card. 
But for the now, I'll just take a Compile River, which I feel reasonably happy about, so that we can be reasonably happy about a lot of other things. Storm is great, actually. If I end up playing Algorithm, that's also fine here. Kind of cheat that into play against Gremlin Knob, that's good. Okay, I'm not too afraid here. We'll probably take 8 again, but... Ooh, didn't draw Defrag in time. I think that might be okay. Math time. Let's assume that I draw... Defragment, Ball Lightning, Ball Lightning, no FTL. How much damage would that do? If I don't dual cast right now. I'm going to do 9 at the end of this turn. Next turn, Defragment gives us 2 focus and channels a Lightning Orb. So if I play Ball Lightning twice, we will deal eight, uh, 16, because they're plus 1 strength. And then 3 Evocations at 10. 30. And then 3 Lightning Orbs at... Five each. Oh yeah, we're way, way, way over here. So I don't think I need to dual cast, and I'm pretty confident I can defend. I don't think there's any draw that I can't kill with, because we only have three defends. I guess we could draw Ball Lightning, Defrag, Defend, Defend, Defend. That would be pretty bad. It's exceedingly unlikely, though. Yeah, we're fine. Although I didn't even draw two ball leggings. I think this is still enough with just the zap. Definitely. Okay, we cleared that no problem. We get the boot. Improving our basic damage sometimes. And there's the immediately useful block card I wanted right after the Gremlin Knob, which is Charge Battery. Seven block and an energy next turn, which I think is fantastic. Could consider a Melter here or a Sweeping Beam to utilize our Shuriken Relic, but I'm completely content with a battery. Okay. At this point, one might ask, do you take Combat or Event? And I say... Events could be something like a Relic, an Upgrade, or a Removal. All those would be pretty good. But it's no guarantee of anything. What are combats? Combats are, for us, looking at more cards. And I think there's definitely more cards this deck would like to add. Frost, in particular. Uh, more powers of various kinds. It's also a chance to gain potions. And we'd love to replace this empty potion slot and the potion of capacity with something more immediately useful. It's also guaranteed gold, which we can use for a future shop as well as scaling for the genetic algorithm. A lot of good reasons to take a combat right now. And I think all of those guaranteed rewards outweigh some unknown potential reward from an event. So I, I think in this case, I'd much rather take two combats because there are cards I would still take, because we have potion slots that we're unhappy with, and because we have a genetic algorithm. Gremlin Horn says hello, although I do regret not having damage to kill this sneaky gremlin on turn one. We can happily block, take three, and have more energy next turn. We'll easily destroy these fools. We have to make sure we kill the wizard by turn three, but I think the, the gremlin horn is going to make that exceedingly easy for us. Normally this fight is quite a conundrum, with four threats pressing at you at the same time. How do you prioritize? Usually I'd say sneaky gremlin is your top priority. They're very high damage outputs, and they will pressure you greatly if you don't kill them immediately. Oh boy. Um, but wizards need to be the next priority, as their uh, turn three attack for massive damage is a serious problem as well. I was really hoping that'd be Electro or something. Let's see. Dual cast, don't fail me now. That might be construed as failing me. Actually, I guess we'll have to hit the wizard here. 
uh, because we also need the wizard dead next turn. Certainly we'll be able to kill someone. Eventually. And I don't mind losing a little bit of health here, but I'm not exactly happy about it. Here's where that random targeting of, uh... Oh, you son of a gun. <laughs> Here's where that random targeting of lightning orb starts to become a problem, as, uh, as previously described. What a sneaky jerk. Shield Gremlin knows what's up today, that's for sure. But the Gremlin Horn is going to kick in here. I'm wondering if I just start by compaldrivering the Sneaky Gremlin. For seven damage, exactly. Seven damage, draw two. But I, I think I might need to make sure that I kill the wizard, though. Does this actually do that? Five plus... Yes. FTL, then Compile Driver, then Strike. Kills with Boot. Both of these cards would reshuffle. Reshuffle timing here, I think, is... Is it better to play the Strike first? Because I want the strike to go back into the draw pile? I don't think so, but maybe. I don't think so because these guys have 7 and 8 health, actually. If they had 6, it would be. Okay, let's do this. Doesn't really matter which one of these we play first. I don't believe. Okay, strike you. Get our energy back. Fall lighting you. Get our energy back. Blap. Get our energy back. Blap some more. Alright, thanks, Gremlin Horn. But, uh, why did you have to do that to me? That said, even though we lost a lot of health, we essentially gained it all back in the form of a regen potion. We're also offered Compile Driver Skim and another Defrag. Holy moly. The choices. The choices. All of these have very justifiable reasons for taking them. Compile Driver is incredible with Shuriken. Skim is just great card draw for this character. Defragment is getting additional focus. These are exactly the reasons why I wanted to take a um, combat over a question mark as well. This kind of card reward. Inka Ruga, thanks for 12 months of support and hitting that sub button. One more defrag is probably decent still. Anything beyond that would be unreasonable. At least until we got Frost. This will be pretty good against Slime Boss, though. I'm I'm convinced enough that a second defrag is pretty spicy. We've gotten so many removals, I don't need Cardrai as much right now. That's pretty much what speedrunning is, Toaster King. I I enjoy playing Spire very, very quickly. It's not something I do all the, that often these days, but it's uh, it's definitely fun. I'm going to go Defrag Ball Lightning. This is a fairly tough fight. This medium slime can be a real pest here. Don't think I'm going to use the regen potion in this fight. I think we're going to try to keep that for the next act. Alright, let Norb say the fungi beast goes first. Usually don't want to target the fungi beast first, because when the fungi beast dies, you become vulnerable. And that is not good. Let's see, 7 plus 6, 13... Pretty clean kill. I think we can kill them both guaranteed here, actually. Uh, as Ball Lightning Strike kills the Fungi Beast, then Zap Dual Cash should kill this one. Yeah. Good fight. Weak Potion. 
And one of my personal favorites, Hologram. We could also consider Fusion, maybe, to activate the Compotiverse. That's, uh, if we had three of them, I would take that. I would take that Fusion in a heartbeat if we had three Compotivers. Instead, I am exceedingly happy with a Hologram, getting a card from the discard pile. One of my favorites, personally. Does make me wish we had upgraded Zap. But there's still time to do that. Always happy with the Hologram. Fusion would need a plus, but uh, that's what we would... Had we three Compulsivers, I would take and upgrade the Fusion, probably. That'd be a, that's a pretty cool way to, to take a defect run. You can get three different orb types and especially extra orb generation and a bunch of Compulsivers with Shuriken Gremlin Horn. Oh boy, that would be blapping real hard, which is not to say the current deck isn't. I use Potion of Capacity against Slime Boss. I don't think the weak potion will make a huge difference here. But I am going to upgrade the second defrag. Or maybe a little top heavy here. I think Gremlin Horn's helping quite a bit. So hologram the FTL. That would get me a Shuriken proc. That's worth it. And draws another card here. Main goal in the slime boss fight is to do 75 damage by turn 3. That way you avoid suffering the slime crush. So many have suffered beneath. It's like a perfectly cromulent turn next turn. Actually, we might not even be using this uh, potion of capacity. Electro. Echo form. I'll take it. That's going to be decisive in our favor, then. I don't think we need any other help here. Let's just go Ball Lightning Strike, and I'll play the algorithm so that um, it is played before the fight ends. If I try to save the algorithm, I guarantee you we're just going to win the fight prematurely. And we won't even get to draw the algorithm again. With uh, four focus, this is going to be a very short fight. Draw me some cards. Go for the gray one first. Although we don't have a lot of choice in who actually dies first here. Nice. Lightning orbs get the get the message. Good job, orbs. Good job, orbs. Herblamo. Alright, that was pretty decisive. We'll take the Fire Potion and the Regen Potion into the next act. And I will... Oh, man. This could have been a sweet Double Claw deck. That said, both Bias Cognition and Buffer are incredible powers here. I think Bias Cog might be too much focus, not enough orbs. Whereas Buffer might just be the perfect block, preventing the next time or upgraded times that we would lose health said, maybe there's no such thing as too much focus. It's worth thinking about. This is tough. Hmm. Thinking about things like Chosen, like Spheric Guardian. Buffer's helping me a lot there. I guess the, the bias does also do a pretty good job. But I really don't like drawing like de defrag, defrag, biased. I'm going to go with the buffer here. I think buffer is the right pick. And I love these boss relics. Three of my favorites on defects. So they're all... No uh, no downside, essentially. Well, this one does have a downside. Option A. Slaver's Collar for bonus energy just during the boss and elite fights. That's pretty good. But is it incredible? 
Defect has a lot of ways to manufacture energy as a character. And I'm thinking we might be able to improve on that with some upgrade density. Maybe an astrolabe. Transforming and upgrading three cards. Get rid of our last strike. Get rid of one defend. Dare I get rid of two defends with genetic battery buffer? I think I do, actually. Happily strike and double defend transform. Into amplify. Oh, I hope so. Calling Bell would give us three relics, one common, one uncommon, one rare. I think that could be pretty decent as well. Although the curse will be pretty impactful in a deck this small. I think this is a pretty moderate positive. This is an unknown, but at minimum, substantial improvement. Not necessarily true. Actually, it could get worse, right? Definitely could get worse, but not much worse. Let's do it. Three Seeks, come on. Oh, that's even better. Whoa, is that even better. Actually, I think our deck is almost finished. That's incredible. Three very self-synergistic cards. A Reinforced Body Plus for incredibly effective block. A Turbo Plus for all the energy. And a Storm Plus to really kick off the Lightning. This is the sort of deck that I think doesn't even necessarily ever need Frost Orbs. One... It's often overlooked valid approach for this character is use your orb slots for only damage and then block with highly effective block cards like in particular reinforced body but also algorithm equilibrium stuff like that i am exceedingly exceedingly happy with what just happened don't think i could say that enough holy moly and I cannot wait to get another card removal. Just keep purging the starter stuff. I'm I defend, zap, and dual cast all on the chopping block here. All of them. How many elites can I reasonably bop? I'm looking at two that I'm very happy with. This is the path I currently like the most. An early res site, an elite followed by another res site. Cash in at this shop with well over 200 gold. Uh, and then fight another elite and get two more rest sites before dealing with Collector. I don't think we're in quite a position to go for the Burning Elite. That could lead to a three elite act, which would be very powerful. But I don't, I don't really think that's likely to happen. And I'll be able to get some more upgrades. We can upgrade the Hologram. We can upgrade the Charge Battery. We can upgrade maybe one of our ball... Uh, we can upgrade the Buffer. These are all important upgrades to get, and this green path has four rest sites along it, which will mean we get to upgrade everything. The smaller the deck is, the more important upgrades become, as you're going to be drawing those cards over and over and over again, usually. I would like to avoid the Burning Elite for now, although the Gremlin Horn does make whatever that Elite is a lot less threatening, actually. Only one less fire, huh? Hmm. I think I'd rather leave the Elite for Act 3. We get a really good act, this act, it's almost not going to matter what happens in Act 3. Book of Stabbing would be my, my fear. Plus strength or plus max health. Both would be threatening, although I think manageable. With only one target, our lightning is just going to destroy. Just annihilate anything we face. Just feels like a bit of an unnecessary risk though. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mo be motivated to do it. Storm buffer. Oh yeah. Ha, ah, I played a skill. Suck it. see. Hollow genetic is a perfect block, so I can hollow the FTL here. Might as well. Get a little bit of bonus damage in there. I see. Well, fair enough. 
is 21, so even the fire potion won't kill. Currently, we're only taking nine. I guess we'll just take the nine. Only buffer had been upgraded. Now you make Electro. We do find a potion. Not a particularly useful one. There's a cool edit. Here we go. Channel of Frost, draw a card. That's going to be a yes from me. This is kind of like draw two with Compile, and it's a block source with our focus. Give me that. Plan on using this in the next fight, probably. Okay, that's fine. A cursed tomb. An abandoned temple, you find a giant book open, riddled with cryptic writings. As you try to interpret the elaborate script, it begins to shift and morph. I would definitely be quaking if I'd started on this side already. Uh, question is, can we get away with taking this? Costs 21 health to get the book. There are three options. Option A, the Incaridian, giving us a random power card on turn one. That'd be extremely good. Option B, Nilri's Codex, lets us shuffle one of three randomly chosen cards into our draw pile each turn. Completely optional at our discretion. Nilri's would be good, although adds a lot of cogn cognitive load to the deck, to the run. Or Necronomicon, which duplicates the first two or more cost attack played each turn. Currently, we have no such cards, although I have to say, if we find Necro, there are some pretty good candidates on this character, such as Sunder and Doom and Gloom. Sufficiently so that I'd be rather tempted to, to pick it up anyway. That said, I think skipping entirely is a valid approach. Currently, we do have a lot of health to work with, and with an abundance of rest sites, I don't feel the worst about resting at one of them. Let's do it. What do we get? The Enchiridion. Yes, that's the one I wanted. Perfect. 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 So we get a random power card on turn one of every fight. Where's the bird face turn? Here it is. No, this is the Ominous Forge, giving us an upgrade or the Warped Tongs in exchange for taking the damage via pain. Something I'm not looking to do. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade Buffer. Don't think I want a pain here at all. Take a couple more combats. I want to get regen potion healing, and I want to I'll look at some more card rewards. I'm gonna get some more money and level up algorithm a bit more. Loop. You got it. Looping away. Can a hologram defragment? How often does that happen? We're supposed to use the potion in this fight, though. But we are winning on turn three here, so it's a bit worrisome. Okay, no potion dropped yet. Third claw. It would have really come together at this moment. Could take a capacitor here to give us extra orb slots. I like that more with Storm, actually. Quite a lot. Or a second algorithm to start leveling up here. It's actually a decent capacitor. Let's take, it, let's take this capacitor. Let's take it. Usually don't advocate taking capacitor any earlier than about this moment. The middle of Act 2 is when more orb slots starts to become a bit more worthwhile. Alright, you two. Now I'm going to use this regen potion, because I remembered. Is this defragment buffer? No, it can't be. It's got to be storm hello world buffer. Random common card can be better than you'd think. But if it's so. Sell, then FTL, then figure it out. We need to kill the cultists quickly here, so let's focus on them first. Alright, I need to know what this is now. All right. Frost in front if possible. Did 
is, but only if I don't play the algorithm. Hmm. I'm not going to play Turbo to also play Zap, because that would add too many days into the draw pile. I'm barely convinced that I... Oh, no, no, Loop puts this in front, because I have Storm. Never mind. Perfect. I could, at this point, choose to Fire Potion to preserve one stack of buffer. I really think I would prefer to have the Fire Potion here, so let's not do that. Should be able to kill the Cultist next turn, and then buffer will block this. Well, should be, and can are not the same thing. Actually, I guess it doesn't even matter as long as I charge battery, because we'll block this hit and buffer either way. Perfect. I'll take it. Great fight. We even get to have all of the healing from the regen potion, all 15. Beautiful. Necronomicon would have been pretty good. I still might take Doom and Gloom Plus here, just for being a really powerful area damage card with a free upgrade attached. Ah, oh, we would have been so happy about this. <laughs> yeah, I think we still take this. I think it's still very, very good, especially alongside the Gremlin Horn, because if it kills anything, we get a refund. It's going to be very good against Collector, too. So I think we super take it, and we super upgrade what? Hologram? Cool headed? I actually have no idea what I upgrade here. Probably not Zapper Dual Cast, as mentioned, they're on the chopping block. Actually, if we have dual, Doom and Gloom, Dual Cast will always be welcome. So maybe we upgrade Dual Cast now, because we did get a Dark Orb. And then upgrade Hologram, when, now that we have a non exhausting zero cost card, we upgrade Hologram here. No motivation at the moment to upgrade Capacitor. Alright, I'm going to upgrade this. What I've talked myself into. I think I really do appreciate the extra energy efficiency at this moment. We really need to eke every little bit out of each turn where possible. Especially against this thing. Our Nemesis, the Book of Stabbing. Definitely the enemy I was worried about, so... I'm, yeah, I'm increasingly glad we're on this path and not the other one. With Turbo, we do get to play everything here. Storm. Uh, what do we want? We want Dark Orb in front? Yes, Dark Orb in front. We're channeling one, two, three lightning. So, go Biased. Doom and Gloom. Turbo. Buffer. Balling. Block all of that, and that's about all we get to block. Here's dual cast with perfect timing. Do I want to dual cast this dark orb for 16 by 2, or do I want to try to dual cast a frost orb? So I could go cool headed ball lightning zap dual cast. I think I'd rather not. Okay, next, don't even bother with this. We'll charge battery ball lightning. Take a little bit, have four energy next turn. Should be comfortable. What do you got? It's fine. Genetic lets us full block this turn. We'll win next turn pretty comfortably. In fact, we could even probably win this turn without even trying. Seems nice. Okay, not too bad. Definitely not lacking for overall damage. We get a very interesting find here, a Peace Pipe, allowing us to remove even more cards from the deck by toking instead of upgrading at rest sites 
And what's that? An electrodynamics to let our lightning hit all enemies? Well, I certainly don't mind if I do. That is an incredible find here for letting us just annihilate any multi-enemy fight, particularly with Storm. Uh, this is incredible. Aggregate also potentially pretty good, although I think with a Turbo Plus we have a lot less need for it. Plus, who knows, we could find a, could find a mummified hand. All right, well, let's start token. Let's do it. Be gone. This one. Blood file for an eensy beansy little bit of healing. Probably not worth it. Let's take the sapphire key. That way we'll get to pick up a different relic later. Ooh. Oh, okay. Runic Capacitor. Now that's a capacitor I can get behind. Runic Capacitor says we start combat with extra orb slots. Don't have to draw or play a card to get them there. They just are there from the beginning. And that lets us have a lot of long-term power in combats. Seek is also here, potentially being a nice way to get an important card in play. Unfortunately, can't quite afford Capacitor card remove, but we got Peace Pipe, so I don't really care that much. The Capacitors are really uh, an Act 3, Act 4 sort of uh, pick, especially if we can get some more Frost into this deck. We can sort of overwhelm our foes with sheer orb power. I also really do like Heat Sinks, actually. Can I do Capacitor Heat Sinks? I can, right? That's uh, 243. Oh, that's perfect. Heat sinks in this deck is going to be incredible. Whenever you play a power card, draw one. Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight. And better yet, that capacitor, uh, that uh, the heat sinks could be upgraded to draw two per power we play. Which is even more incredible. These nerds have no idea what's about to hit them. They're gonna be super dead. Yeah, super duper dead. else to play, right? Oh yeah, we've entered silly territory. Self-repair would be a good pickup here at this point, too. You'll see me take basically no card that isn't either upgraded or a power from here. Beautiful. Yeah, here we should go Storm first. Storm, well, FTL first on you. Actually, now I want to go Heat Sinks first. Because I drew a hologram. Heat Sinks, Storm, Turbo, Electro, keep drawing, get the Turbo back. Let's see, how much total damage are we looking at? 8 plus 7 plus 14 is 29. So I'll full block if I reinforced for 4 here, keep my buffer charge. Or I can zap and cool-headed, reinforce for two, lose the buffer. Let's see what the cool-headed draws. Oh. Well, I'll play that then. And this. Have fun, nerds. Show me the algorithm. Yay. All right, they've been thoroughly annihilated. We now have an oddly smooth stone, meaning our reinforced body is an even better block card. 10 block X times. And we are offered a creative AI, which is uh, kind of a big deal when you have a storm and a heat sinks. Hmm. 
Hologram's also pretty good here. We don't necessarily need this creative AI. But the per turn lightning, the per turn card draw, that's pretty powerful. Let's do it. Hopefully this won't backfire. All right, first and foremost, we need to upgrade heat sinks. Way more important than toking anything right now. Enjoy confusing me. Easy. The blapification. So many claws. All right, we can either toke or upgrade one of these. I think we want to upgrade the hologram, as before mentioned, so that we can hologram the turbo or void multiple times. Other upgrades that are going to be good eventually. Cool-headed, creative AI. I don't think we ever need to upgrade this genetic... Nice turn one, yeah. Prepare to be stormed. Alright, as soon as we draw Electro, we just instantly kill the Torch Heads. Just immediately. Super duper dead. Have fun. Sinks first, though. Just hold the ground the turbo. This is 40 block, that'll be plenty. Shame we lose the energy when that happens, but it's not a big deal. boss is super dead. Still got a buffer charge. There's nothing they can do. Resummon and they'll just die immediately. It doesn't matter. GG. Slap. Well, that was decisive. Thanks for the money and... Probably thanks for the Echo Form, too. A power that says our first card played each turn is doubled. Perfect way to scale, well, all the stuff we're already doing. Meteor Strike's kind of cute, too, giving us three Plasma Orbs, but if, only if we can pay the upfront cost of five, which is hard to justify. I'll take an Echo Form. Now we do want a second energy generating card, or at least a relic that gives some kind of energy. Nuclear battery burning capacitor. Now, that's interesting. Certainly, we don't want to take Pandora's box because, um, I don't have any strike or defend cards. So this is a rare instance of tiny house better than Pandora's box, objectively, because the Pandora's box does not a thing. Not one single thing does this Pandora's box do. That's so funny. Tiny House, not to be ignored here. Tiny House is a bunch of scattered bonuses and kind of asks you, like, can you... Do you see value in a spare change jar? It's kind of what Tiny House is. Many small bonuses accumulate collectively to something hopefully meaningful. And the 50 gold certainly can be, pushing you over the threshold for an important relic. Five max health can always make a meaningful difference, too. 
a random upgrade is definitely useful in a deck with no strikes or defends. Like, I, there's no no upgrade I wouldn't be at least reasonably happy with. Although FTL is pretty, pretty sad. And a card reward, too. That's all pretty decent. Personally, I am rather motivated to take the battery here, giving us a plasma orb at the start of each combat with six orb slots. We're, it's it's going to take a while before we're able to evoke that. And when we do evoke it, we'll get another immediate two energy to spend on getting one of these expensive powers in play. So I really like the nuclear battery as it's energy per turn and then potentially some additional upfront energy that we might need. It's also another unique orb type for the compile driver, so we get bonus draw occasionally out of it too. Really like the, uh, the nuclear battery. And we can dual cast it for four immediate energy too. Does the Relic Bar work left to right? Yes, yeah, so Crack Core first in the Relic Bar. Then Nuclear Battery. We start with a Lightning Orb and then a Plasma Orb. If you've got a the Dark Orb from Symbiotic Virus, then its placement is going to depend on where it is in the Relic Bar. If it's between the Crack Core and the Nuclear Battery, then it would be Lightning, Dark, Plasma. But if it comes after the Nuclear Battery, it would be Lightning, Plasma, Dark. Kind of cool like that. All right, we do have to path for the Burning Elite this act, which means uh, pretty juicy stuff, actually. Not sure if I want to go to a shop. I don't have a choice. Okay, we're going to a shop. Good talk. Lee. And then we'll figure out from here where we want to go. I uh, have to take one question mark. We could take two. I guess we'll see what's in the first one. The Saint, thanks for 23 months of support. Keep on keep it on. Too bad. Okay, who's our first boss? Not the Awakened One. Okay, that's a good sign. A very good sign. Perfect. It's actually a pretty good card with Smooth Stone. 13 block for one energy. I think we could use a little bit more upfront block, actually. And if it's coming for free with an upgrade, I'll take it. One hundred and fifty gold to lose the red mask. I have to go to this shop, so I don't think I will do that. Take the events or the combat. Combat's unlikely to give me enough gold to afford the shop relic. Could, though. How many actual cards are left after we play all the powers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve real cards out of a 25 card deck. I guess turbo counts, too. Oh, this is a shrine. This is a shrine event? No. To a Lord Red Mask is not a shrine event. Don't be ridiculous. One of the most common events there is. Try to double that algorithm. And yes, the, the shrine term is absolutely misused by Spire, to be clear. That part's weird. Hmm. 
It'll be hard to draw into it with all these days, done. Hmm. Maybe shouldn't have played heat sinks, actually. From I'm having is if I play any powers, I'll draw cards. If I draw the genetic algorithm from playing a power, I can't duplicate it. Here we go. Just enough to buy the medical kit. If we want it, I might prefer skim, to be honest. Could even pair that with zap remove. Hurry, McDur, thanks for 11 months of support. Much love. of status cards. Is that a huge deal for us? I don't think it is, quite frankly. Not compared to the upfront draw of something like Skim. Really need more uh, power, uh, energy generation, though. <laughs> Second Compulsiver makes some sense, too. Transform a card. Okay. Hmm. FTL, your time has come and now gone. Since we have so much other card draw, you are now mostly useless. Please turn into a defrag. Thanks. This is why we add leap right here. Be back for you later, both of you. Creative reinforced his 12 block. Dang it. Hmm. Eat sinks on the bottom is problematic for us. There we go. Heat sinks in echo form. Thank you. And more energy for next turn. Sounds perfect. Prefer to draw those next turn, so let's just go Doom and Gloom falling in here. Next turn we double buffer, and that should solve the fight, more or less. Energy, please. Thank you. Even more energy, please. Thank you again. Just kind of 
clicking random cards at this point. It barely even matters here. Bottled Lightning. Let's just start with a particular skill in the opening hand. Bottled Skim, perhaps. Bottled Turbo. Bottled... Hmm. Bottled Seek. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Upgrade that. Upgrade it. Do it. Do it. That's why you look at the card reward, by the way. Amazing. Just incredible. Ludicrous. Simply absurd. I don't even know what to say. Like, what? The actual heck. Just happened here. Dual cast hello? Fine. So we can pretty reliably play most of our deck on turn one now, which is kind of a big deal. Now we really would like a mummified hand. That would that would really send us to the stratosphere. Although we don't necessarily even need a mummified hand to actually do that. Okay, we do lose one. Sad. Extra buffers, though. That could have actually hurt. Hmm. It's not my favorite draw. That's better. Next time, voids. Suckers. It's gone mad with power unceasing top and another echo form. Or go for the eyes. Oh, he's gone mad with power. Double echo form time, chat. Mad with powers. Meal ticket heals us at stores. Hmm. So either go to one more elite or three more rest sites, as well as a couple of events here. Hmm. Just snagged it. No questions asked. I, I might have talked with almost any other power. I might have talked for a little bit about how Go for the Eyes is very good against Awaken One, which it is. But I'm going double echo for him. We're going to lean all in here. So, what would I toke? Slash upgrade. I would upgrade Skin, Defragment, and Creative AI, probably. I'll get two anyway. I don't think I go for an elite here. This will also get me more money. Actually, a lot more money. Enough money to buy another relic at another shop. Is the mummy hand rare? No, it's an uncommon. So we're very unlikely to see it at this point. We'll never be able to afford it at a shop. So there's only the hope that it drops from this elite or from one of these nodes. I'd much rather just get an energy generating card. Again, encouraging us to go this way, though. Hmm. Why not toke the bull lightnings? We need some reusable source of lightning. I guess the, the creative AI could do, but... That's kind of spooky, too. Actually, I guess we don't necessarily need that. With this many orb slots. Hmm.
This deck's actually pretty good against the Awakened one, now that I think about it. Okay. Let's go. care about echoing genetic much. Well, I guess it could make a difference here. Okay, just give me buffer then. Oh, I felt that actually. Uh, foolish. Oh wait, I played one. Never mind. Buffer, that's what I'm playing. Double foolish. Not what I wanted to see. Toxic Cake? Very, very, very happy with the Cool Headed Plus here. Card Draw and Frost, both reusable. And that's actually all we really wanted for Awakened One, too. Secret Mummy Hand? Now, a letter opener? Okay, that is an uncommon relic, though. That's pretty cool. We play three skills in one turn, we'll deal five damage to all enemies. Now I definitely want to upgrade this. take one more event, which is just a fight anyway. Fine by me. Well, let's play this normal like. Seems fine to me. Double storm. Restormification. Four storms in seven years ago. Now we can consider go for the eyes pretty strongly, actually. Let's grab that and make that my upgrade. Played a bunch. Upgrade the cool headed. Is auto shields good here? I don't think so, because of hologram, and we're probably going to have loops. But I say go for the eyes is a late ish pick. I think that go for the eyes is a great anytime pick, but it does get a bit better as you go later and later. These potions. So we could took took a ball lightning here. Upgrading a cool headed is pretty similar. Well, not that similar. Yeah, I'll took one of the ball lightnings. At this point, shrink down the deck a little bit. We'll face our dreaded foes. Don't even deck it. Storm heat sinks, echo form turbo. That's what I want on turn one in basically every single one of these fights. Playing that just because it's a free power by and large. Defragment. Uh, I want to double cast the plasma this turn. So let's go ball lightning, dual casts. Now we can Capacitor. 
second echo form take a bit of damage, or what do I want to do here? I can hologram the turbo, do both. All of my wildest dreams. Perfect. Keep them coming. I'll take it. Have fun, nerds. I didn't need to. Shouldn't matter, but mm, sloppy. Sloppy. Yeah, double this and the next card. Which is this. Get me back Electro just in case I can play it. Turbo Electro. Seems good. All right, who's next? Will it be Time Eater or? Nope. No or. It's Time Eater. So, chat, you do not get to see how this deck faces the Awakened One. I'm sorry. However, my plan strategy for that would be to ignore the Storm. Maybe not the Heat Sinks, but we would ignore Storm, uh, use the Echo Forms and the Defrags to try to get, like, eight or nine really big Frost Orbs in play during that fight. Here, we're just going to get the Creative EIs in play and go wild. Should be a good time. If I could play 12 cards this turn, that'd also be really, really nice. I'm not gonna double echo in this fight. Seems absurd. Creative in play. Do I need another one? I don't think so. There's our double echo. Good. This is going to be pretty decisive. Seems satisfying. Heal yourself as much as you wish. Good luck. I'm just gonna be here creating more owls. Kerblam. Okay, GG. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room is this, the heart of the spire, the source of all of these powers. You charge your core to its maximum, dealing 2390. A distant future. 
sci-fi year because we have an incredibly high score after destroying everything. Gonna heal the full at the shop thanks to the meal ticket. So we have one last upgrade or toke here. Could toke the other ball lightning or upgrade one of our card draw cards. Or even upgrade the second echo form so that I can play it twice properly. I want to go for the eyes. But I think I need that upgrade even less now. Actually, I want to upgrade the creative AI. I want that energy. That's an important thing. I hadn't noticed we hadn't done that yet. That'll save me uh, quite a bit of heartache, so to speak. Oh my goodness, that's an amplify? Hmm. Now that is juicy, huh? Your next power card is played twice even on sale, although we can never upgrade it. Let's try it. The prophecy has spoken. How's it going? I'm really that guy. We missed the Awakened One. We got Time Eater and Donu Deka dodging out on any sort of negative interaction for powers, but I did have a plan for beating the Awakened One if we encountered them. Just don't know if it was a good plan. So I can amp... Oh man, I can amplify Storm if I want. Wait, 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 wait. Amp Storm. No, no, no. We gotta get more card draw. He thinks... Heat sinks and turbo. We just start going here. I did consider seeking amplify and uh, an electro here and just getting a lot of lightning orbs, but I don't think it would have been enough. This first here. Heat sinks, then storm. Let me go. Okay, there's echo form. I don't really want to play Echo Form. Hmm. Pretty good draws. Thinking something like dual cast, reinforce, take a little bit here. Maybe even charge battery to short myself two block for one more energy next turn. That's probably better than reinforce for three. If I just buffer, I take six. That's true. Buffer charge battery does not take zero. It's not how that works, unfortunately. Hmm. Hmm. I really would have liked to see hologram or something. I wanted to be able to evoke this, but the capacitor we got for free, plus the one I chose to play, made that impossible. So I'm tempted to compile river as well. I'll take, okay, let's go dual cast buffer. Draw more. No luck there, unfortunately. Probably at this point still worth playing the battery for the next turn energy. If we can get Electro down, we'll have a perfectly fine turn here. That seems good. That seems really good.
sure I'll amp that. Not too bad. Captain's Wheel, 18 block on turn 3, that's going to help a lot. We could take an unupgraded version of Consume if you wanted to get a little bit more focus for less orb slots. I don't think that we do. We're going to skip that. And I think we're going to have a really good time against the heart. We get a Hello World as a random power. I'm actually not upset about that at all. Uh, I'm also going to take a ton of Beat of Death on turn 1. That's interesting. Our top priority is to get at least one Echo Form in play this turn, as well as the Heat Sinks. Both of those need to happen. Hmm. I guess we should start that out with a Skim, then. I'm going to use the Block Potion turn one if and only if I needed to preserve Buffer. Otherwise, I'm just going to take the damage to the face right now. We'll be Ancient Potioning at the end of the turn. Just in case, like, Biased or something happens. Be careful about that. Okay. That's going to be Heatsink's Turbo, then. on this turn, I don't think. Interesting series of draws, to be sure. Okay, let's start with this. Like this. Aha, okay, I thought so. Thought so. I guess this is where we hologram turbo, huh? Now we can play buffer if we want to. we think it's necessary for our safety. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Having one in play is sufficient here. This is a great turn next turn. Lock the... that first time. Huh? Hmm. You drive a hard bargain, Mr. Hard. Dang it. Gonna lose both buffers pretty much no matter what happens here. Said it won't be that much damage next turn. We never die next turn. Um, especially if I double go for the eyes. That's probably the safe play here, huh? Single compile? Yeah. Let's double this. be doubling the cool-headed, actually. Thanks. And I'll play this. 
Okay. Okay. Currently on the back foot, but that doesn't have to stay that way. Yet been able to meaningfully use Amplify, but again, it doesn't have to stay that way. Get some more energy next turn. Let's sort ourselves out here. Let's for a bit more damage. Still have our algorithm, still have our creative AI. This feels okay. Let's get two more Frost Orbs. Stop all this beat of death nonsense. I don't think I care about Streamline much. I care about this. Not drawing that void. Feels kind of important. Recursion seems pretty good damage here, too. Let's get rid of that void. I could use Go for the Eyes this turn. There's no real benefit to it. I could get one more cool-headed. That'd be okay. I don't want the status card, though, and I do want more damage. No energy, huh? Okay, we're gonna need to double-charge battery then, for sure, Z's. Might have to play Algo here. I want to be able to double Creative AI next turn. Very important that I can do that. It's time. Gotta say, the Amplify has not been what we were hoping it would be. has been of slight concern here. An awkward turn next turn. Forced to go for the eyes will help next turn quite a lot, as will Cool Headed. Guess that's fine. Next turn's gonna be the decider whether or not this run goes well. Beat of Death is now three. Next turn, we're gonna be attacked for six times 15. We can make this work. I'm gonna start with double recursion. Actually, yeah, we could actually just go for a kill next turn, right? If we double storm, play Electrodynamics, that might be enough raw damage. We don't even have to worry about blocking. Yeah, actually. I like where Chat's head is at. Especially with Hologram in my hand. Let's go double Hologram. No, no, double Storm. Hmm. Okay, double Storm. Is that going to be enough? Hmm. Oh yeah, okay, we got the turbo. That's what matters there. Nice. Let's keep drawing. Could continue the weekend into the next round. Actually, let's just keep hologramming turbo. Max out our damage this turn. Okay, that's pretty good damage. And one more energy for next turn. That'll be plenty. 
double electro, let's go. Get hecked, Mr. Hart. Also double reinforced blocking by Lovely 2. GG. Streak continues. Mark number 205. Off the list, GG. What a fantastic run. So many orbs. So little time. GG. GG, everybody. Hello and welcome, Mindless. The 400 counter is our year-long challenge to get 100 wins with every single character in Slay the Spire. Defect, Silence, Watcher, Ironclad. Sort of our format for the year. We play until we win, then change characters, so we have an equal number of wins with everybody. And my kind of promise to the channel is to do that 400 times in 2022. GG. I also saw that Panthiron welcomed the list of cuties, permanently enshrining your name below the stream. Welcome, welcome. Let me get you permanently listed there. As a reminder, we've changed the way the channel cutie reward works now. You get added to the list below the stream permanently. You no longer lose status once uh, somebody takes it over, and anybody who was previously a QT is also on that list. So welcome. Welcome, welcome, Panthiron, to the list. It's basically just a, a thank you for, for watching enough of this channel to get 500,000 heckin' channel points. That's a lot. That's a lot. All right, GG. GG. The spire sleeps, and so shall I. GG. It's currently, I believe, more than 30 names on the cutie list. A lot of folks who have watched a lot of the channel. I can't believe we bottled the seek. Where was that? That was, uh... I was here, yeah. Obtained Bottle Lightning and Seek. Yep, that sure happened. And that was certainly the turning point of the run. We pretty much obliterated every single enemy from there. Again, I don't think Awaken 1 would have been too bad, because all we had to do was not play Storm. And we can get a ton of Frost Orbs with good focus. GG. So let's count let's count them down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine wins in a row. On Ascension 20 Heart. That's pretty cool, rotating characters. My personal best for rotating wins is indeed eleven. So we're just a couple wins away from tying that, which is pretty cool. We've got a Watcher run and an Ironclad run to uh, to be successful. Two my statistically better characters, so odds of tying the record are pretty good, but that uh, silent run for number 12 would be pretty tough. We'll see. We'll see. However, in order to, to give this streak a reasonable chance of success, I'm going to swap games here. Too many runs in one day taxes the mind. Makes you more likely to play poorly, so we'll swap, swap things up and I guess continue our XCOM campaign today. Something I've been itching to do anyway. If you're headed out as we switch games, no worries. Appreciate you being here. Been a joy to stream some wonderful spires. Don't forget you can be notified when we're live or whenever we switch games with the Discord. Hubris and boredom, yeah. Was it... It was to Langevulin, right? Am I remembering that correctly? It was one of those weird Act 1 Watcher... T to Slavers. Oh, no, that's right. I'm thinking of uh, a different streak. To Slavers. Yeah, that is hubris. 
Act 1 elites, those are, well, sometimes unavoidable. Act 2 elites, you did something wrong, kid. You did something wrong. It's always those heckin' slavers, man. They they get ya. They get ya. Infidel Zombie, thanks for 18 months, 116 in dog years. I like that. You can feel the mental fatigue through the stream, through the screen. It's true. It's true. We are we are seeing Inspire, one of the things that kind of contributes to um, consistent success, which is ultimately what a, a win streak is testing your ability to do, is consistently calculate well and think through your decisions and not make any mistakes anywhere along the way. There's an RNG aspect to it that's important too. But once you reach a, a certain point, it, it's ultimately a test of how consistently day to day can you maintain your main, mental discipline you know can you stick to a sleep schedule and a diet that will enable you to think consistently and clearly every day um, are you in an environment where your atmospheric factors are going to be consistent you know are you is your temperature kind of consistent is your air pressure kind of consistent these have effects on you too uh, in ways that you may not be able to control. Um, is your face exploding because it's allergies time? A lot of that can can have an impact. And uh, as you get to like longer and longer win streaks, you have to be able to account for more and more of that in a way that some of which is impossible, plain impossible and unreasonable and not even connected to Slay the Spire ultimately. So it's ridiculous too to try to like diet to to win slay the spire or something and yet it might be your best move i think something like unlosable exists well not as not as long as the uh, abandon run buttons there you can lose any run by just choosing not to play your cards and ending turn too so you could be like is it a, is it unlosable with optimal play and that's that's a weird question somehow. I don't I don't know how to parse that one. Interesting. The only losing move is not to play. That's right. <laughs> First time I ever streamed Slay the Spire Infidel Zombie, I had three viewers. At the time, I was a completely unknown Twitch affiliate with like 500 followers who'd streamed some XCOM campaigns that I'd have a blast with. You know, to a couple dozen viewers. And that was that was my success story on Twitch prior to, to trying um, Slay the Spire. But upon starting up Spire, it became quite apparent to people that, one, the game was really cool to watch, and two, that my particular style of the play had some merit to it. Um, so within just a couple of months of streaming Spire on a semi-regular basis, we had hundreds of people tuning in. It's like... It, Really shocking uh, how quickly the channel blew up. I started streaming Spire in, I think, July of 2018. And three months later, I was a Twitch partner. Which is way, way, way faster than most people are able to go from affiliate to partner. We have played some uh, Monster Train on the channel, Nip Slip. Been streaming on on uh, Twitch for four years. Spire's been part of it for almost all that time. We have had a lot of other guests' games on the channel, but Spire's always been the heart and soul and has kind of like become the concrete pillar of this community in an incredible way. I'm going to swap up games here for the sake of staying fresh. Game boat is live.
And speaking of other games, that's what we're going to do right now. Some XCOM 2. We've been playing uh, through XCOM 2 with War of the Chosen on Legendary recently. Uh, kind of the, one of the games that got this channel started. Decided to revisit it for in celebration of four full years on Twitch. And I've just been having a really good time with it. It's uh, a super enjoyable strategy experience for me. Papaya says, any thoughts on Rogue Mage? I've liked the Witcher games personally, but the uh, online Gwent impl implementations have so far been lacking. Might end up... Um, dang it. Thought I canceled that. Might end up checking it out at some point, but it's not on my immediate to-do list at any uh, at the moment. Going to be focusing more on uh, Into the Breach Advance Edition when that comes out later this month. Let's swap up our, uh, whoa, why did that get louder? Weird, okay. Anyway. Let's swap to the War of the Chosen soundtrack today. Emson says, love the Gwent beta, but don't like they did with the full release. Heard that from quite a few as well. So, let's check out where we are in our campaign. We're getting pretty close to the end here. Uh, at the end of our last play session, we took down the Chosen Assassin, the second of the three super-powered psionic alien-human hybrid anime protagonists that you have to fight, uh, and took her shotgun and sword, which will be assuredly used to put our rangers um, well above everybody else. I definitely played a ton of uh, ton of Gwent when I went through Witcher 3, that's for sure. But it really is a game kind of designed to be played against an AI. They had to redo it entirely for PvP, and I think they kind of lost the heart and soul of it when they tried to do that. Taking a fundamentally asymmetric game and trying to make it symmetric was a choice. Let's see, how are we doing soldier-wise? Tired, but otherwise everybody's looking really good. We have an extremely well-developed roster. Three max rank soldiers now, including our skirmisher, human alien, former advent person. And boy, am I excited for our weapons to get upgraded now. We've got a bunch of uh, high-level weapon upgrades uh, add-ons stockpiled, waiting for the plasma rifle tech to finish in four days. Perfect. But that's right, we have a haven defense we have to do. So we're starting out uh, strong here. So we're going to need to bring the best and brightest of our soldiers. Because there's a retaliation strike. It's just Berserkers and Chrysalids? Interesting. Alright, I can deal with that. Oh, that's right, the upgrades carry over. I forgot it worked like that. You're right, there has been no reason to wait. Because I'm lazy, that's why. I don't know. Hopefully the... the oh, actually, the Warlock seems likely to show up, now that I think about it. Alright, so... Let's not take you. Warden seems very good. Take Zatox. Who else is available here? Take Thanos. Thanos can do some nonsense. The Shadow Chamber show all types of enemies. Yes. As long as you've at least met them one time. So, Chrysalids can be annoying. But accessory mods. Did I have to customize the look? Zero mods.
none. That that changed looks anyway. Uh, I guess we'll take another grenadier. Yeah, we'll take Jack. Okay, so we need to get people loaded out with not only the correct weapons here, which is going to be chosen stuff for our sniper here. Dark Lance and Dark Claw, along with blue screen rounds, because I know... That we're fighting some nonsense. Let's see, I have an exosuit, right? Let's do the spider suit. Blue screen rounds. Need a couple battle scanners. You don't have a PCS, huh? It's will and dodge, though. I don't think I'm gonna keep bother with you. This is XCOM 2, Adamson. Definitely a favorite of mine. With the War of the Chosen add-on, that's right. Got a limited supply of battle scanners, huh? New tubes. the Wraith suit, actually. Special guys can't equip them. Thanos could, though. I guess we'll just promote uh, Drake's armor, then. Armor. Wraith suit, that's right. Oh, look at that fancy armor. For him. Let's go. Let's go. Our PC stim is permanent for that character. Yes. Yes. Once uh, equipped on a soldier, it cannot be unequipped. It lasts forever. Uh, you can replace it with a different one, but you could never get the one that you used back and use it on a different soldier. And yes, they are gone if the soldier dies. I agree. F XCOM suffers from what I described as a reverse inverse difficulty curve, We're picking up an which means that the, the early game is very difficult, and then the later the you get, where you have more leveled soldiers and more abilities, the easier it gets. So we haven't lost a soldier in quite a while this campaign. All enemy uh, we've been kind of annihilating everything. One of those chosen is leading an assault on the resistance encampment in this area. Our people are doing what they can. Oh, we got a landed back. UFO here. But That's kind of cool that they made a shelter out of. Civilians trapped nearby. There's a group of resistance soldiers hunkered down not far from your position. Move in and help fend off the attacking alien forces. You got it. Positioning. So I've got six soldiers here, all with fairly different classes, fairly different sets of abilities that they can use. goal is to navigate around this map okay, in turn-based tactical style and fight off the aliens that are attacking humans in this area. There's some. Two codexes. That's easy enough to deal with. Let's see. If I grapple up here, do I have clear shots on them? Find out. Grapple out! Drake has uh, blue screen rounds. Yes, perfect. It's a clean hunter, too. Drake has blue screen rounds, which will do bonus damage to these codexes. They're kind of digital enemies. And the blue screen protocol will make very short work of them here. Oh, but you don't have death from above, sir. Alright, well, one down. We can Sci Inspire for the other kill. I'll probably do that. 
Generally speaking, the best answer to the enemies in XCOM is to kill them as soon as they appear. Oh, you can also do this. 100% of a justice, but could have an interesting consequence. Done. We'll do the science fire thing. That seems way more humanly reasonable. I'm going. Assuming you can see Drake. Can't. Fair enough. Ah, oh, but combat presence works on him. Yeah. Have an action, sir. Target eliminated. Easy. Seems doable. I am watching. I don't want to go too further, too much further forward. Enemies in XCOM can't take any actions until you've seen them on your turn at least one time. Other than the ones that interact with the uh, resistance forces, of course. Wow, they do lots of damage now. Berserkers aren't going to stand a chance. Copy that. Let's see, anybody else out here? Not that we can see. Moving there. Well, I saw it briefly, but now it's gone. Okay. Hello? I guess that'll be okay. No sign of it. That's funny. I'd like to be able to see it so that the Templar can attack it. Hello? Well, I guess if it's not active, it's not going to do anything, right? On Overwatch. All right, everyone will just Overwatch. I'm on it. Rock and roll. No need to ask twice. I'll keep a watchful eye. Affirmative, covering out. Get him. Yeah. In the ground. Check it before you get too close. It's an elite infiltrator. Not too much of a threat. Especially not with the, uh, or sorry, elite specter. Ah. You will pay the price. Maybe we'll get a max rank Templar this campaign. Let's see. If you say so. I'm on it. Creep up in Overwatch. Aye, aye. There's definitely more enemies around. Lots more. No problem, boss. Reloading. No trespassers. Come get some. Scanning. There's a large group of civilians pinned down within range of your position. Sensors indicate hostile forces are closing in fast. We need to get in there before the aliens Got it, bud. slaughter those people. Templars have any range attacks or weapons? Yes, they have an auto pistol that they can make uh, basic attacks with. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but it has unlimited ammo just like other pistols. Uh, never needs to be reloaded. They also have a couple of ranged abilities, like psionic bolts they can fire. Uh, that can be used. I take a new approach. 
Jolt is called is one of them. Which is a psionic lightning attack that bounces between enemies. It's pretty sweet. Does more damage with more of a focus, I, I think. Cost focus to fire. Most of the Templar abilities require focus or cost focus. What's over there? Okay, no sign of additional foes Dang. yet. Get Drake a little closer to the action. No need to ask twice. I'll lead the way. I move. I stand ready. Affirmative. Covering now. Wait, what? There had to be two of them, I imagine. I'm pretty sure I killed the other one. I must improve. Come on, focus! Soldier down! Oh, he's doing the thing. Shadowbound. Essentially creates a shadow clone of Drake. Until we kill the, uh... Infiltrator. Ein Schaff, thanks for conti continuing that gifted sum from Raj Korajak. Appreciate you keeping it cozy. That's one option. I think the soldier will be revived if we kill the clone, too. Yeah, kill those chrysalids. Hmm. That smells like unintended interaction, and not in a good way. Okay. <laughs> I think we have a problem. Control a codex. How so fascinating. Okay, so killing the copy gets Drake back up. Then Drake can then kill the infiltrator it's himself. It's a pretty good idea. You get to the. Yeah, you can get to the codex. Do it. I strike all my people. Good for you, sir. on the shadow. What about justice? Can't use justice on the shadow. I guess that makes some sort of sense. Okay, let's take the 71s. Make my life easy if that hits. We take from the elder stock. Weapon running low. Perfect. No longer unconscious. Well, watch this. This. No, not like that. What a shenanigan we click that was. You saw the uh, <laughs> the tile move away from my mouse like that. All right. Well, that was rude, but I can still make it work. Thanks, XCOM. All right. What if I can see him from here? Whatever you say. Yeah. There we go. The enemy should fear us. The resistance team is in the clear. They're moving to help the other survivors. Yeah, 
Who else is left? I will go. I'm trusting you here. There's an active berserker somewhere, yeah. so we don't want to go too far forward at the moment. Got it covered. Overwatching. Oh, we got more problems than that, too. That man's not a man at all. He's a Jillo. Nice shot. Isn't backing off. They've got units in the AO that are ignoring our forces. Oh no, not cyanic bomb. Alright, those three soldiers won't have ammo this turn, which is no bueno. Please stop making the codexes do this. You have to stop. <laughs> All right, and now it's our turn to deal with uh, everything that has happened. So here's Bolt. He's out of the action. You're out of the action. The heavies are all out of action. Doesn't mean we can't bombard with heavy weaponry up here, though. Which is my current goal. Let's get rid of these things. As they are a pressing threat. Drake can absolutely murder one of them. How far can Void Rift go? Pretty close, actually. Can Hover use Justice? Seems like the time to use the biggest gun. The Blast Air Bomb. If you say so. Can't quite get them both. Oh, I can get both of the Infiltrator Nerds. Let's do it that way. Actually didn't blow the cover off that one, though. That's not 100% to hit, either. Oh, you're still in cover, too. I understand. A well, lot less destructive than I was hoping, actually. As you command. Okay, that should be out of the blast radius of the psionic bomb. Storm cannon them. Roger. Again, I'm not uh, not averse to using the heavy weapons at all. Oh, Especially when the damage is so superb. Seems doable. Three. 
No one is safe. Okay, one Spectre down. Sixty-five percent to grapple that one out of location with justice. Fire Whiplash first. Whiplash the Berserker. Fear the lash. That's also a problem, don't forget. Also use combat thingy thingy to give an extra action to somebody else. More deserving. Definitely gonna run and kill this thing. So that's a pretty unreliable shot, that's what I'm gaining. Better off trying to kill the Berserker, I guess, and letting that do one thing. Seems reasonable. Heading out. Target neutralized. Oh crap. Oh no, chrysalids? Late in the turn? Oh boy. That is very spooky. It's like, kill that berserker on my turn. this thing, actually. Hmm. How's that gonna work? Not as well as I want it to, I'm sure of that. A we swipe could be a problem. Actually, let's take out this faceless. kill that with our Psy ability thing. Squish. Yeah, the chrysalids killing people is going to be a really big problem for us. As each of those will turn into an egg, which will hatch into potentially multiple chrysalids. This could also be a bit of a problem, depending on what he chooses to do. We just knock somebody out, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. There's too many here. I'm hit bad. Ouch. Yeah, so many civilians killed. They got behind me. I only need to save two more though, so I think we'll be okay actually. And the resistance fighters are gonna do some good work here. Damn it! Find some cover! Definitely a particularly nasty combination of enemies to be up against in this situation. I, I like this. Yeah. Get rid of those stinky codexes. Okay. 
So that codex is a problem. Could run over and kill it with the Templar. That's not a bad idea. Gonna reload this turn. You gotta die. So let's start with... No, you don't have that. That's you. So reload and then fire a plasma grenade. Back in business. Might as well hit the clone at the same time. No reason not to, really. What? Interesting. I saw that it said shield wall at the bottom, but I was very clearly aiming a grenade. That's rather unusual. Keep living with it, though. It's fine. Reinitializing weapon. Did just fine. Although we did waste the uh, heavy's action there. Unfortunately. Alright, we need to grenade that chrysalid, I think. Did hit the civilian. More crimes, more crimes. That was a void rift. of those you gotta die all the templars get back in there love how fast he is I like how we smashed the guy who was already dead to do that your acid. The newborn chrysalids are weaker than the regular ones, at least. Only six health. Plasma grenade. Grenade out. Killed him. Back online. Some 
higher ground. Let's see what's going on over here. Oh, I saw there was a chrysalid somewhere in there. It's not where he ended up, interestingly. Solid copy. No cocooning. No problem, boss. Fire, acid, and poison? Yeah, okay. Completely immune to that. Weapon depleted. Seems good to me. I will tear you apart. Actually, should be able to kill a baby chrysalid easily. Let's overextend a little bit here. You too, buddy. So that blade storm ability is like a, a melee Overwatch. Anything that tries to move or attack next to the Templar gets attacked first. And if they die, well, they don't get to do the thing. Not a lot left. Hmm. Seems hard to see. Cover me, reloading. Good to go. Double time. Got it, moving. Alright, close the ranks, everybody. Whatever you say. A righteous strike. I like that I can disorient the cocoon somehow. What does that even mean? I will move. Yeah, he blade stormed the egg. Amazing. Got 9 out of 19 civilians because of those couple bad turns where there was many aliens active. That's the civilians' fault, though, for shooting at the Codexes in the first place and causing that whole mess. I would like to at least we were fine. Citizens of Advent, ...that our peacekeepers will stop at nothing to prevent further attacks by criminal elements such as the one that occurred today. The Elders have total faith in our ability to overcome any and all threats to our peace. We're taking Advent apart one mission at a time, Commander. Oh yeah, max rank sniper. 
And fire. Fire the pistol three times the same target. It's my personal favorite. Very, very, very useful ability to take down, well, all sorts of things, but particularly sectopods when equipped with blue screen rounds. You have Good done stuff. an outstanding job leading the resistance, Commander. Dang right I have. Reduce contact cost. Doesn't seem that important. Uh, what does seem important is making contact with East Asia. We can make contact with quite a few places. Do it. There's an intel cost to making contact with new regions. Wow. With this region now under our control, we could attempt the uh, forge mission. We've made initial contact with the resistance operatives working in this area, Commander. And sped You're up our research even further, or at least uh, made laboratories better. But we don't have any labs, so I don't think we actually did anything there. Well, never mind. Kind of short on delirium, huh? Avenger plotting new course. How much intel does this even give? Our people seem to work well together, Commander. All right, one more upgrade slot on vector rifles. That'll make our uh, Reaper a little bit better. Let's get a new thingy here. Improved assault rifles. All assault rifles now deal plus one damage. That's pretty cool. Breakthrough research, spare parts. Cheaper ground projects. Once you get to the late game, you can kind of, uh, kind of faff around with the covert actions to get all sorts of things that you want. That's right, we've got the, the Warlock's gonna try to counter, uh, sabotage the Avenger again. I'm fine with that, I'll do that again. Let's, uh, let's get improved assault rifles. That sounds really nice, actually. My kind Have fun, you two. I do not think I could have predicted this outcome. Though it is intriguing. The aliens aren't going to be happy when they see we've got energy weapons just like theirs now. Yeah. On more than one occasion during the initial testing of the alien plasma rifles recovered from the field, we nearly suffered a catastrophic loss of the test unit while conducting simple firing runs. After a complete disassembly and analysis, it seems that the weapon operates along a very fine threshold between ideal power levels and total system failure. Even to the smallest of micro-fractures, any number of lightly shielded components within the power distribution system could lead to devastating collapse of field integrity leaving little chance for the operator's survival. I can only assume at this point the aliens had little concern for the well-being of their own forces when designing the weapon, as I have no doubt they discovered this flaw during their own testing. In any case, I'll make the appropriate modifications to our internal designs to ensure no such weakness exists for the safety of our troops. So we can now upgrade a wide variety of XCOM equipment. Plus one to auto pistol damage doesn't seem that big a deal, quite frankly. But instant autopsies are good. Well, let's throw you up to separately research the storm gun and beam cannon. We'll be doing the assassin's weaponry next, I think. The plasma lance. That's right. This fearsome creature, long referred to as a berserker is clearly a genetic relation to the other mutant species we have encountered in the field. 
For reasons yet unknown, this particular variant is unique in that it is altogether consumed by what can only be described as blind rage, a thirst for combat, Juicy. unlike any other creature we've encountered. As if the typical Muton wasn't aggressive enough, this hulking beast seems dangerous even in death. I will be more than happy to dispose of it once I file my report. This species was quickly tagged by our forces in the field as a berserker based on its often irrationally aggressive behavior on the battlefield. Upon initial examination, it's difficult to ignore the extreme muscle growth present throughout the specimen, leaving little need for extensive armor or even conventional weaponry. I suspect the added bulk of the subject to be the direct result of an intentional protein deficiency engineered by the aliens explicitly to create the hulking mass we see today. As for its behavior, I can only infer that was intended as well, as the aliens are well within their capability to modulate the endocrine glands or equivalent for the purposes of hormonal behavioral control. In any case, this is an extremely dangerous and unstable species, best avoided by our troops at anything other than long range. Greater mobility and a damage resistance for multiple turns. Interesting. Ah, oh, permanent one-time use thing. Gotcha. Those aren't very good, usually. Presumably, the name Chrysalid derives from assumptions made previously about the creature's unusual means of reproduction. Although rumors have long prevailed about the existence of zombies created as a byproduct of the Chrysalid gestation, recent reports seem to indicate a new equally disturbing means of propagating their species. Even my own intellectual curiosity is not enough to overcome my doubts as to whether or not it was really a wise decision for our troops to bring this particular specimen on board the ship. Yeah. An inherently terrifying and unpleasant species to encounter by surprise, I can only admire our troops for their courage in dealing with the species known as the chrysalid. Mirroring the general form of a common arthropod, immediately noticeable is the sleek armored exoskeleton protecting its segmented body. Of particular concern for our troops are the honed points of the chrysalid's fangs and legs, capable of inflicting critical injuries on their own, and they also allow for the creature's gruesome means of rapid reproduction in the field. Though Central Officer Bradford insists that he witnessed a different, equally invasive means of chrysalid gestation during the earliest days of the war, there is no evidence that such attacks still occur today. Unfortunately, from what he's described, I would say the aliens have actually evolved the process into a more efficient and deadly solution. Chrysalids we see today inject a venom that immediately begins softening the structure of the victim's internal organs, preparing the subject to serve as both the material for a gestation co cocoon and as a ready supply of nutrients for the chrysalid young. Should the victim fail to receive medical support and expire, the co a cocoon will form shortly thereafter. Assuming the cocoon is not destroyed during the initial gestation period, we can expect up to three chrysalid young to emerge after an impressively short period of growth. Recent reports in the field indicate some form of burrowing behavior, perhaps another evolution of past techniques. In this case, likely for defensive purposes, our troops would be well advised to watch where they step in the future. Bonus health return damage to aimed enemy melee attackers with a chance to 100% chance to set them afire. It's pretty sweet. All right, let's start on the assassin the weapons. Is eager to begin, Commander. Commander? What's in the Proving Ground? I don't think you'll find anyone Nothing. on board this ship who feels the least bit sorry to hear the Elders are dying off. If anything, morale probably got a boost once word spread outside of the senior staff. Of course, uh, actually, let's see. They've always got a scheme. And I get the impression we're going to end up part of their cure whether we like it or not. New orders, Commander? Oh yeah, many upgrades that we can get. Limit sidearm. Fusion blade, fusion ripjack, the better bullpup. The plasma rifle. 350 supplies. 50 Illyrium, hmm. Many good upgrades. Not that many of us actually use the base plasma rifle. Oh, and Hellweaves are instant. Okay, good. Let's start with the bullpup upgrade. And 
And the Celestial Gauntlets. Let's get some more supplies. And sell some stuff at the black market if we want. Otherwise, we're actually a little short on supplies you currently. Have the knowledge, Commander. But that does not mean you must pursue it. If you desire to sacrifice your soldiers in vain, then by all means, proceed. Market is open. Laser sight viper cope. Corpse. And scopes. Actually, you can have three basic laser sights. I don't care about those. And every Viper Corpse. And ten of these. Oh, we need Stun Lancer Corpses. Yeah, that's, too, that's already a lot of supplies. Sell some Mech Rex. this many chrysalide corpses either. It also sell equipment you no longer want to use, which is kind of nice. See, that's a basic scope too, right? Yeah, sell that. Superior scope, superior autoloader, superior repeater. Yeah. Decrease the... Wait, chosen assassin information? Chosen assassin's already dead. Excuse you. Take that 20% instant kill chance. Cool, we'll spend some of those upgrades before the next mission. I think it's time to head over to the black sites. It is time. Or the black site data coordinates, rather. Uh, although, let's make. Hello, Commander. A better blade. A better ripjack. And the better Psyamp. I'm actually almost out of Valyrium. Wow. Guess we'll have to go get more. Fun. Setting course for Sector 14. Before we jump into this mission, I'm also going to take our second big break of the day, refill my legs, stretch my water, grab a quick snack, and in Five or to ten minutes or so, we'll be back to Commander, launch this to mission. One of our troops equip the Skulljack for use in the field if we're going to make any progress towards our current objective. I still don't have the better. All right, we'll play with weapon upgrades when I get back. Should be in a few minutes. BRB, folks, don't go nowhere.
Hello, hello, we're back. We're back. Welcome, welcome, everybody. All right, it's time to gear up for the Advent Forge mission. Who all is available for this? I'm looking to bring... Uh, I see our best are tired, huh? They need a little nappy-wappy. Well, we're bringing Crypto with the Skulljack. That will be happening. Uh, and we need Sectopod insurance, too. I guess that could be Crypto, potentially. Blank epilogue page will serve perfectly adequately as our sniper here. Yeah, she'll do well. Alright, we get Dark Lance, Dark Claw, and... Sneaky Armor, Red Suit. That should be quite adequate for you. No PCS on you either, but again, we just have will and such. Will can be good, though. <clears throat> more will means you can do more consecutive combat deployments. Barca will be great here. Let's, uh, let's tweak the weapon upgrades on the mag cannon. You don't even have the right mag cannon equipped. Use this one. Alright, let's tweak the loadout here or the uh, weapon upgrades. Now that I know that they transfer over, we can do a little bit better here. I think 20 aim on the heavy seems like a really big deal. We might want to do that. Bonus action chance could be nice. Free reloads could be nice. Got a lot of advanced uh, laser sights here. Don't want crit chance on the heavies. That doesn't seem worth it. We have one superior stock. Giving them stock. That doesn't seem like it's a great idea, though. I'm thinking a scope so we can actually have the shredders work effectively. And the regular expanded mag is fine. We got two superior ones, so that's probably a bit better. Um, but I might actually want to go with a free auto loader. Free reloads, four free reloads. Hmm. I want the expanded mags on people who are going to be using their whole ammo in one turn. Go auto litter. Okay. Everything else you have is good. Semiotic Rifle now has three slots. We've got a regular repeater. Let's make that the superior repeater. 20% instant kill chance. And a bigger clip size, maybe? <clears throat> that way we could have a repeater, what's it called? Vanish. That'll be able to kill just about anything. Let's do it. For maximum nonsense there. You have a PCS equipped? Yes. High rule. I don't love the untouchable. On you. Two shark guns. Three. Uh, let's go with a mind shield, actually. 
Probably gonna want that if we're going in with low will, especially. Go superior hair sight, superior autoloader. On the shotgun. <clears throat> Is that good enough? No. Oh. Okay. Actually, not a gas bomb. is some sort of alien production facility, most likely tied to that stuff we found at the Black Site. Advent and the alien forces won't be happy to see us, so expect heavy resistance. We have to do whatever it takes to find out what's going on in there. This is Avenger. The facility is in range. Move to investigate. We're out of sight. All right, Spooky Ghost. Take a peek. I go where I am needed. The Reapers are very, very stealthy. Which makes them excellent advanced scouts for the squad. Sad enemy grouping. Where are the real enemies? Roger that. Will do. So we know jumping forward is safe. Let's go ahead and get everybody a lot closer then. Double time. Sniper doesn't need to be closer necessarily, but might appreciate it. Moving. Moving. I go where you tell me. Eyes on the prize. On. Well, we definitely have to deal with them if that's where they are. No moving around them now. Two of our soldiers are, or at least uh, Annabelle here is pinned in place. Can't move without being revealed. Which means it will shoot at them. Might as well. Moving to designated coordinates. Just uh, go ahead and kills on them. Lockdown confirmed. So we'll have to take a shot at both. At the same time. We're busted. Impressed, yeah. Target still up. Kind of interesting that was only one shot, but works for me. Tired 
of waiting around. So 8 to 10 with that. Slash is now also 8 to 10. And can light enemies on fire. No sign. Time to motor. Let's move already. Location confirmed. Got it covered. Big robot. My robot. Making new friends. Why is this a different number now? Did the Sectopod tech score go up? Interesting. I'll think about you later. Activate Haywire. Good to go. Running! Maintaining position. Back online! Grapple out! Moving to Overwatch. Don't want it to see me yet. Here I come! On Overwatch! Now it's fine, though. Hit the armor! Watch the sights! A patrol is upwind. Okay, we can mostly take out this with the um, Dark Claw. Dark Claw plus blue screen rounds is amazing at Sectopod killing. Uh, behold. That armor's tough. Dark Claw ignores five armor. And a kill with the rifle from Ghost won't reveal. So we can have the Ghost kill the Sectopod. Perfect. Moving as ordered. It's 
Assuming this actually killed. We only ignore two armor, huh? Let's fire Sting, just to be sure. Fear my strike. Yeah, <laughs> I thought we might do that. Then penetrate. Fair enough. Let's do this. Glad our sniper was on the other tower. Uh, that's not even active. That's a flamer guy. Okay. No problemo. Double time. Closing on target position now. Overwatch. On the move. Moving to Overwatch. <laughs> Rare hack, hack outcome permanently increasing tech score is part of how Crypto got their current tech score. We don't even have a max level Gremlin equipped, which is spooky. Oh, hello. I am at your service. The invaders send a patrol. Commander, that codex provides the ideal There's the codex. opportunity to infiltrate the advent network. We will need to move in with the Skulljack to initiate the process. I'm on it. Scanning. Wait, no, don't! Ah, oh, heck. I didn't think about that. We missed, though. Good. Shot wide. All right, that may or may not have been a good thing. Enemy is still up. Fun problems. So, no overwatches. I'll fall back a little bit here. No overwatches. Don't have any bonus actions either. Okay, I'll go. Head in there now. My life 
is in your hands. Whatever you say. Adjusting aim. Locked and loaded. With a shot. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted, more or less. One ranger <clears throat> available. Okay, both rangers are available too, so I'm ready to do... Ready to do the thing. Skulljack the Codex. And let's get this situation into a whole lot more level complicated. Let's do it. Go for the small intel. Hack the planet. Oh, it's over there? Actually, that might be okay. Actually, I can't see it, so that is a problem. So, what just spawned in is an avatar. We've been trying to stop the avatar project for this entire game. And this creature here is the ultimate. Commander, I believe we are seeing something entirely new. Huh. An alien species that has so far managed to elude capture or observation by resistance forces. I I'm seeing it as partial a cautious approach. <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> Avatar is uh, essentially a human body being psionically possessed by the mind of an ethereal, a fusion between alien and human to create the perfect fighting machine. Heavily armored, tons of health, uh, and worst of all, these things teleport every time they get hit, which makes them real nightmares to deal with. However, if I use Banish here, fire to target until you run out of ammo or it dies. This will reveal the Reaper, um, but I'm not sure that it matters. Get him. Leave this place. Well, it's not showing showing each shot, but they are resolving. Kind of. My training fails known to them. What happened there? Okay, I didn't did indeed use all the ammo. Um Avatar did not teleport, did not die either, shockingly. Note that Avatars have an innate 15 defense, pretty good dodge chance, too. Okay. <clears throat> Banish weird, especially on Avatars, I super believe it. I'm trusting you here. That's going to be blaster bomb time. Have a big kaboom, both of you. Nowhere to hide. It's 
Sometimes when they get closer, it's actually quite a good thing. It jumped to a new position as soon as it took damage. That means you can get your rangers in in range. Dick and Griff would love to. Hey there, buddy. Enemies down. Good. to kill this codex. Good. Did you see that one? I'm going. You too, buddy. Went up the armor. Lot of reloads we had to do. Give me time to reload. My natural habitat. As you order, Commander. Spot it covered. Let's move already. Oh shoot. Oh, that's gonna be bad. I think I forgot they were over there, right? Hmm. Just in that style. Definitely just gave myself a problem. That I didn't need to have. Foolish. Give you aid protocol, though. Any chosen still up? The Warlock is still up. Kind of farming him a little bit for ability points. We might have to uh, deal with the Avenger defense from the Warlock later this month. What's over there? Hmm. An Acid Bomb really not get both of them. That's interesting. to, like, land it on the wall, which I don't think is reasonable. Okay, let me get a regular bomb, then. Throwing grenade! Although giving them Battle Frenzy maybe not my best idea. Hit him with this? I'm not gonna do that. Overwatch. Let's see what they choose to do. It's still moving! It's still moving! They found oh, spotted the Reaper too. <clears throat> Dodged! Well played. I don't want to die like this. Not too bad. Uh oh. Chain panic. 
Chain camera angle panic. Oh no. <laughs> Our soldiers are suffering out there. We'll need to give them some time to recover when we get back. That's why bringing tired soldiers on a mission not necessarily a good idea. We're fine though. I guess that'll be okay. Mission for a moment. Rolling. Fair enough. How many is that now? I'm ready. Right. I'm on it. That mech. 69? Aka's squad site is imposing a very significant penalty based on damage. Got it. Uh, distance, not damage. Could haywire protocol. I don't like that idea. Try not to break this one. Scope instead of a laser sight for better, uh... Better ranger aim. I could see that. Usually you like to get close enough that you have 100% to hit anyway, but... Having the extra assurance is very nice. Especially because the difference between 99% uh, to hit and 100% is quite large due to XCOM's dodge system. So if you can get to the clean hundred, it's it's a lot better. It's on Overwatch for us now? That's pretty cool. If you say so. I don't think you can go wrong with scope on anyone though. Scopes are really good. Hit the armor! Gonna need to reload soon. Quite. Burning should kill him at the start of his turn. We focus on the purifier now. Don't really want a sword purifier. Not a great idea. For that reason. No longer a threat. Good hit, by the way. Good copy. Moving on target. You want to go to high ground, sir. It's 
this is fine. I won't let them pass. Neck on Don't neck violence. Back in. What's I can't see the mech from there. I imagine we're going to lose control of this pretty soon here. Ooh, hello. Looks like we have bigger priorities to deal with. Two more Archons and an Andromedon. Don't think we can hack the other mech yet. Looks like it's going to be kill zone time, though. Although these shots aren't very likely to hit at this range. Out of max range, too. Whatever you say. They choose to take their aggro out on uh, the mech. Let's see. Let's use uh, combat protocol to lower this mech's health when we're not controlling. I'll have one of the rangers kill it so they can get an untouchable bonus. perfect for this. Kijun also has untouchable though. Move up, shoot. Run over there, maybe? You have less mobility than uh, Griff, though. Couple protections working in her favor there. Uh, you haven't taken your turn yet, that's right. I'd like you to blow stuff up. Please and thank you. You're gonna run in hide, sir. You've got squad sight, and I intend for you to use it. Might want to hide. We should have destroyed the cover the Andromedon had. My turn on watch. Locking them out. We're just gonna hide. Understood. Moving out. All set. Still hacked. Good. Shoot it. That is not good. Target. 
They seem to be having a hard time with it. There's it. Oh no, now I missed two. Alright, fair enough. Nobody can hit anything. Great turn. It's killing time. Got a lot we need to deal with here. I imagine the mech is going to leave our control at the end of the turn, so I would like to make the mech explode violently, if possible. That'd be great. Our heavy can't do much from here. Might be able to shoot at our mech, though. Shredstorm cannon, that's what I want to use. Really not that wide, unfortunately. I can reposition the mech so that we're easier to hit with a shred storm too. Let's start with that. So I can get the missiles to target correctly. Seems like a real challenge. It really wants to lock on to the uh, units here. Or two. All right, well, that's fine. Shoot yourself. Back in. And now. And if possible, I would like for the Shred Storm Cannon to kill one of these three targets. Oh, I can't even get them all? Dang it. Really can't get the Archon and the dude from here. Wow. Such a narrow thing. <laughs> Curses. Maybe I don't fire it then. It'll be an awkward turn, that's for sure. We don't have a lot left that we can do. We have so many things we need to kill. Bit of a problem. Wouldn't you say? Maybe we can get the purifier to explode. That would help. I don't think I can get capacitor discharge over there. Aid protocol is back, though. You got a free reload, so you can move and fire the bomb. I'm Find trusting you here. Arc it across here. That'd be really helpful, actually. Not quite. It's still moving. Doesn't feel like it helped. There's a mod for non-tile snapping grenades. Interesting. Can't tell if I'd like that less or more. Probably less than default behavior. Hmm, this has really gotten complicated in a way that I really didn't want it to. Hmm. the mech and the purifier? Yes.
Now we have an even bigger problem. Okay, let's go aid protocol and Griff here. Combat protocol on the back. Does this even get the bonus damage? No, because it's no longer a robotic unit now that it's under my control? I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know. I can only blame myself. I was really hoping to get a kill with Griff here. Doesn't seem like that's going to happen now. Which is extra bad. Oh, perfect. Good. Oh, wait, but it wasn't a... <laughs> I don't get the bonus because it was not a enemy kill. I didn't even think about that. Oh, boy. All right, it's Mimic Beacon time is what that means. Good luck. Should have reloaded first there. We dodge though. I got nothing. Shut away, just got it. I like that they've grouped up for easy disposal here. Too close to the heat. Even the fire is not really a problem. The source of the advent. The corrupt heart of the aliens. Okay, uh, what have we got here? Acid bomb, please. And thank you. Fire in the hole! Stinky Andromedons requiring that I kill them twice. How dare they? Get a little closer here. This should be fine. No problem, boss. Yeah. Full charge! Let's see robotic units take more damage. Weird.
that was good. Good shots. Ready to go. Sword's actually more damage. Not guaranteed to hit, though. You have Blade Storm, too? Okay. Right here. Nice. Woo! You see that? I do see that. I see that so well that I'm going to do something dumb. Very well. Definitely the purifier could have blown up. I wanted to know if untouchable was going to save me from the explosion. I don't think so. Um, but I had to know. Got it covered. Also move, curious, move, if using a, curious if using a fire sword guarantees the explosion. Let's do this. I do not know the answer to. Fresh ammo. Let's get a little closer here. Affirmative. We wanted Wraith suits on the Rangers. Rock and roll. Moving to Overwatch. Affirmative. Covering now. Come get some. That's deeply satisfying. An entire hole in the building. Good stuff. Good stuff. Here I come. Roger that. Got it covered. Heading to that location. It's not too far. Already there. Affirmative. Covering Moving now. Overwatch. Shut up. Listen. Overwatch. Finally. Good to go. Heading there now. I understand. Getting it done. Come get some. Got it covered. Got it. Moving. Hey, some of these holes were here hey, when I got a here when we arrived. We were here before. On Overwatch. Yeah, uh, the door. That was there. That one's new, though. On the move. Cool looking tank. Moving out. Let's move already. Clean room. This is Avenger. Package is in range. Seems doable. Getting it done. Affirmative. Covering now. My watch begins. Scanning. Quiet. Do you hear something? That one's also new. Let's do this. The enemy has 
reserves. This is just like the one. Carefully! Preserve the specimen at all costs! Like the one the commander was in. Confirmed acquisition of the package. Move to evac. You got it, buddy. Let's see. Can my Blade Storm Ranger? Now that that is the Blade Storm Ranger, got it. Can't Blade Storm while you're carrying the prototype, because the prototype is a person. Understood. Affirmative. Just like the simulations. I'm on it. That's a long run. I'll take the high road. Let's go over here. I can handle that. Then kills on them. Area on lockdown. Sure, grab it. <sighs> Just slowing me down. Tired of waiting around. Go, go, go. Come get some. Forces are near. So missed up the ladder. If there is one. Bomb that nerd. Griff's gonna murder this guy. With rapid fire. Yeah, like with a, a scope, both of those would have been 100%. Uh, wouldn't have been dodges, rather. So that would have been a very notable damage upgrade. I'm ready. Good enough for me. Produce some ammo over here. I hit the armor. Not sure why you still have a mag rifle. And skull mine you still. Get him. Target's still active. And in the event of a miss. Dropping takes an action. Uh, easy does it. Yeah. You can't handle 
from me, finally! more enemies on the map, but I don't care much. In short order. Happy to get out of here. Rolling out. On Overwatch. No problem, boss. Let's move already. On it. I'm all over it. Audit's confirmed. On the move. Overwatch. Packing it in. I'm gone. I am done here. Let's go. I'm out of here. Status confirmed. Target package in custody. Ready to boogie. We've got what we came for. Let's get clear of the area. GG. -er. That should be some serious Avatar project production. Advent officials announced an increase to this month's recruitment quotas. Citizens are encouraged to voluntarily visit their nearest recruitment center. Remember, only together can we build a better tomorrow. I never had any doubts about your capabilities, Commander. GG, everybody. Work, as always, Commander, although I firmly believe the specimen we have recovered is crucial to the alien. It's funny to get both of these at the same time. We currently do not have the means of properly studying. So we got an avatar corpse. The suit we recovered. And the avatar that we killed and an advent well stasis suit. For advent's seemingly limitless forces. Even focusing my efforts is so new objective added. Avatar autopsy. And the stasis suit. Within the stasis suit, we are detecting a humanoid organism of some kind. New type of advent soldier, an alien being heretofore unseen. Considering the level of security in place to protect this asset, it is surely important to the aliens. And a one successful avatar, which was Your murdered. findings at the Forge facility are disconcerting, Commander. If the aliens are somehow assembling or growing the advent forces in mass, our efforts to defeat them will be that much harder. I will leave you and your team to pursue this further. And both of those actions reduce the avatar New progress by three. Added. Commander, I've updated our current objectives based on the most recent findings. No kidding, rest acquired. Creations to fuel your meager resistance. My intel no. too long. Now their designs will fail you. Your efforts continue to impress, Commander. The loss of this facility and the recovery of the alien specimen will no doubt impede their work on the Avatar project. Commander, we need to keep an eye out for the chosen sabotage attempts. We don't have any more time to lose. Hmm. I feel like we're supposed to lose more, lose more Avatar Project progress than that. Wonder if them both activating at the same time. You have sacrificed one of the Elder's greatest creations, and hmm. for that, there can be no punishment less than eternity in the void. It's a new Gorilla Ops twenty-five. Oh, because there's lost. Got it. Get an engineer and counter the loss. Uh, the, uh, blah. Ooh, that's what I want to counter. High alert, spooky. Gatekeeper, sectoid, elite priest. Ah, high level of psionic enemies present. Let's do this psionic enemies only one. That sounds fun. Setting course for the East African sector. Surely things will go well. There is an unusual amount of psionic energy permeating this entire area, Commander. 
I would expect we will find various psionically adept aliens deployed in the field here. Then we'll bring some mind shields. I'm sure we'll be okay. The other side troll soldier. Is that truly how bad our barracks is in shape? It is. Yeah, they got all tuckered out. Banana! Give that man some combat protocol. We haven't seen banana in a long time. Hasn't been much need. Bomb. I should go with a flashbang. Flashbang can disable num numerous psionic things, such as the sectoids of the priests. They're both vulnerable to flashbangs. Let's give this a go. Sounds like a fun, fun squad to try to win with. To hack the workstation, huh? that permanent hack bonus. Sky Ranger deployed. Menace ready to deploy. Begin. in this area and secure the train. This is our chance to stop their progress. Menace 1-5, this is Avenger. The access point we're after is just ahead. Move to secure the area. Expect hostile resistance. Solid copy. I'm all over it. There's our gatekeeper. That'd be a good one to ambush. I'm all over 
Peacekeeper. Peacekeeper is a very nasty enemy, to say the least. Okay, no Lance does more damage, Void Rift does more damage, good. Move, move, move. Dashing. Most of our squad is rather sad. No need to ask twice. Roger, I've got my eyes on him. Oh, jeez. Well, that's terrifying. Uh, uh, hmm. Okay. Hmm. Multiple gatekeepers. Not what I was ready for today. Got it. Beat feet. Closer here. It's hilarious. Me to do it. Terrifying. No need to ask twice. Double time. Good enough. Good enough. Prepare to blast a bomb. Catch. Shred all that armor off them, please. didn't move. Interesting. Quite. So, gatekeepers are pretty nasty. Inside that sphere is a psionic mind of terrifying power. They are lined up perfectly for Void Lance, though, yes? Not quite. Too far away. 31% chance. To mind control it. Probably not worth it here. Yeah, I'm immune to fire. But it was immune to. I need to kill one of them. I have no idea what the other one's gonna get up to. Bonus action to save Thanos. Noted. Or vice versa. Don't think they're immune to poison, though. want the holler targeting, although Shred would be really welcome. Shot failed to connect. He's fine. Kind of. Okay, we get to gas bomb. The other one. Get 
gas bomb here. We're definitely going to have to leave one of them alive. I can't kill them both with this team. Grenade out. So we may finally get to see a gatekeeper doing gatekeeper things, which is deeply terrifying. Depending on what the gatekeeper chooses to try to do. Should use a protocol on hoops. Seems like a bad choice. This heavy. And take a shot at the gatekeeper. So you're going to use teamwork to give one action to your we friend. To and then use silence. The other one. No armor will shield you. Minimum damage is a bit disappointing. But it is what it is. Tell me I can kill... Oh no, I can't kill either of them? That's really not good. Oh dear. Uh-oh. Oh no. I wanted to at least kill one of them. Crap. Maybe it'll die to poison. Or... Oh, hair trigger! Yeah, kill it. Uh, let's go guarantee combat protocol, please. Please. So that's a gatekeeper with a shell open. Don't know what that did. Let's just be grateful it didn't seem to do anything. the gateway ability does, so I, I don't know what it was trying to do. Just lap them. Lap them some more. Gatekeepers can be disoriented, I didn't realize. Deals damage and revives dead things as Psy Zombies, but there was no target. Revive. Oh. Hello? Oh, yeah. Oh, dear. Hi there! That's fine. I don't think they can fire this turn. Let's do this! Not even close! I 
am with you. Time for zip zap. Good. I can handle that. Those can't fire until they have two actions. And no they're just going to die to a boss. grenade. Oh, and there were two priests in there. That's funny. Three. Three priests in there. Like some sort of bad joke. I, I. Three priests in a turret walk into a grenade. Hair trigger? That was hair trigger. Barely hit. Need a resupply. Extended myself, thinking we were done. Probably should have been counting. All right, let's see what we got here. Gotta do better. Doesn't count as a kill. Even worse, actually. Mm -hmm. Definitely overextended myself. Roger that. Of course, they can try to do um, mind control nonsense all they want, but with these mind shields on everyone, most of the psionics are going to be pretty ineffective here. Does mind shield work on stasis? No idea. No. I'm badly wounded here. Ow. Did that to myself? To be fair. Okay, nobody died. That matters a lot. Can't allow 
crypto to get murdered, though. That is deeply unacceptable. Neither can Thanos get killed. Problem is, there's a dearth of cover at the moment facing this direction. Just definitely going to make things problematic for us. People who are going to be unstasis too. Mimic beacon with us. I don't think we brought one. So I can either move with Implacable or get the heck out of here. Skullmine seems like a good way to kill this priest in the numbers a little bit. And I'd like to do a mind attack over there. Could result in our heavy getting destroyed, though. Oh, I didn't even check to see if Thanos could get over there. Not quite. I can so, handle that. Can't quite hit it, though. So, combat protocol, that one priest, at least. Maybe not from here, though. Not from here, we can't. Don't know how gremlin targeting works. It's like squad sight or something. Ugh. This might sting a little. Uh-oh. How much damage? Didn't get control. Control. <laughs> I thought that was gonna happen. Well so much for crypto. When they get back to Oh base, my we'll god, that's so funny. Soldiers some time to heal, mentally and physically. Amazing. Thanks, XCOM. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. That was, uh, that was good. Overwatching. Well, hell. Got All right, it. get out of there, I guess. Okay, we got plenty of good soldiers. There's no real loss some. here. Other than, well, somebody we liked a lot. Thanks, I, I guess. Okay, one less. One less. Oof. Okay, there's the real power of the gateway. It's a fun mission. Hmm. Can't hack the thingy anymore either. Figures we bought crypto on the mission to get a permanent bonus and we completely chuffed it. How devastating. I'd be tempted to try to roll lucky here. Sure would bail me out of this situation, which is otherwise looking really bad on several fronts. Not the least because the cover is intolerably useless. Are 
we in trouble? Eh, kind of. This is our worst squad, so. Don't resist me. Eh, kind of. If I'd known there would be three gatekeepers, I wouldn't have done this. I thought we'd be facing one, maybe two. Makes sense for the theme, though. Cover. Solid copy. Stuck? No. It's pretty good though. Not good. All right, we've got flank people anyway, Solid so copy. screw it. Cannon attack alone is deadly. Loot. With only four of us left, we're in a bit of a pickle here. I think we need to get out and go. I don't think I can even kill one gatekeeper now that I don't longer have the heavies. That's good luck, at least. That all you got? Okay. Oh, and reinforcements are coming in? Oh, yeah, we gotta leave. The cavalry's here! Uh, in fact, this doesn't even matter. I'm leaving. Help! Help! Someone help! Tired of waiting around. On the move. Not interested in this mission anymore. Hi. Dashing. I'm out of here. Copy. Roger that. All surviving XCOM operatives Goodbye. are secure. Firebrand returning to base. First failure in a while. First soldier losses in a while. Gene That's all right. Clinic swell with new arrivals as Advent peacekeepers struck another crippling blow against insurgent forces today. The speaker is confident that Advent's message of peace. Blah blah blah. blah. Crypto, immortal in our hearts and in our hacking. Hello, Commander. Not a big deal. We'll have to recruit a new soldier, maybe, but again, it's really not a big deal. Plain and simple. Avenger plotting new course. Commander, the aliens continue to make progress on the Avatar project. If we're going to slow them down, we'll need to move fast. Our actions have succeeded, and the elders grow fearful. Alien loot. Or do Avatar project stuff? Not really. Give me some alien loot. Who wants a promotion? Enjoy. Our order is clear, and we will obey it. Jeez.
Laboratory construction initiated. Engineers pretty much don't have a use anymore, actually. Now that we've gotten everything extricated. Incoming message for you, Commander. Patching it through to your quarters now. It is unfortunate, Commander, that your recent efforts have proven to be so mediocre. Mediocre? There is nothing more to yeah, that's be fair. The time for action is finally at hand. Collector. That seems fine. Don't know that I need resistance network anymore. My followers will obey. The outcome of this research can only further our advances, Commander. Having recovered both the Chosen's assassin's weapons from the field, a shotgun and a modular sword, I must admit I am intrigued by the advances the aliens have managed to craft into these otherwise conventional weapons. The shotgun, used primarily as a secondary weapon by the Elder's assassin, is elegant in its simplicity and adherence to a singular purpose. Built upon an advanced composite frame in close quarters, the unique design is nearly unmatched by any other projectile weapon. During repeated field trials, the fully enclosed Magnetic Ordnance Reduction System, MARS, consistently delivered a tightly patterned array of alloy fragments capable of penetrating all but the most unyielding targets. The Assassin's Prize Sword is something else entirely, and may be among the more unique and perhaps important weapons we've ever recovered. Despite attempts at non-destructive analysis of the sword's composition, including variations on X-ray fluorescence, I have yet to make any significant progress towards identifying the material in question. As it stands, we know only that the sword is forged of a non-terrestrial metallic element held in tight suspension by psionic energy that is self-contained by forces unknown. By all accounts, this weapon is a prize for both the warrior and scholar alike. The katana. Forged by hands not of this earth. Plasma Lance is inspired. Perfect. I will send word as soon as we have something of note. Perfect. Although, actually, let's, um... No, yeah, that's fine. Resistance Communications Facility now operational. Okay, now we can make contract with, contact with many more regions and expand across the globe here if we want to. What do you presume to do with that which you have stolen? Ew, two Illyrian coins? That's uh, really not what I thought we were going to get. Understanding that which you have taken from the forge. Commander, one of our people was taken captive during the most recent Ooh, operation. Bullpups. We're doing everything we can to yes, plus one to bullpup damage. Safe return. I want We've it. Been a shot at hitting the elders hard. Something we haven't tried before. You up for it, Commander? We will work hand in hand with our new allies. Your soldiers should never allow themselves oh. to be captured in battle. PB was captured by the warlock. May be able to determine where they're being held through a future covert action. Good stasis. Strategic resource located. Wow. That is a ton of both of those. Avenger plotting new course. Get that to use some more get use that to get some more critical upgrades for the squad. Start up the proving ground again here. I appreciate you recruiting new staff for the engineering team, 
But as it stands, we have people still waiting for an assignment. We can have them working on construction, excavation, or staffing a facility. What can I do for you, Commander? We'll get started right away, Commander. I'll send word when the project is complete. Cool. More assorted loot, please. Avenger plotting new course. Our inspiration did prove beneficial. Shadow Lance. Oh, the top level uh, Temniotic rifle. Perfect for the Reapers. We want this. Well, we got the thingy. We probably want beam cannons next. I had assumed you'd make that research a priority. Because we have the assassins. I'll notify you as soon as the is available. Oh, and I want to. New orders, Commander. Two twenty-five supplies. 2020. New high priority mission information. Okay, this looks a lot more manageable. We'll do this one real quick. This will probably be our mass mi last mission for the day. I gotta get going soon here. We didn't lose anything too important there. Who's available? Drake is good. Valor Black. Get out of here, Valor. Let's take Boomer. And I guess we'll take Total Misplay since we lost our best uh, specialist here. Training center too, but too lazy. So it's got a superior laser sight for 20 crit chance, 4 additional shots, 20% chance of reaction, and 4 damage on a missed shot. Beautiful weapon. Kind of does even more damage, 5 armor pierce, and cannot miss. Seems pretty good. Seems exceedingly good. I lose a war suit? Ooh, I think I lost a war suit in the blaster launcher on that previous mission. That's a bit of a loss. It's deeply unfortunate, actually. Only two slots. I thought they had three. Good enough for me. Sky 
Sky Ranger deployed. In position for deployment. Begin. Now the resistance has been tracking a VIP known for working with the aliens, and they finally narrowed the target to a quadrant in this area. They've asked Trying us to get a little bit cooler in here. This person once and for all. It's a middling success. As always, we'll need to eliminate any hostile forces protecting the package to secure the area. Capture the target if possible. Use force if necessary. Menace one five. Target location confirmed. Move to engage. Eliminate all hostile contacts. Capture or kill the enemy VIP. Moving out. They have a patrol moving here. Easy enough. Got it. Oh, right, we're not concealed. Other than with the Reaper. Probably didn't want to run forward like that then. to get either of those. Also get them both with the Null Lance, which is very good. On the move! Oh, I should have checked that that won't hit uh, Drake. Okay, it totally does, so we'll have to rule that out. Probably do Domination or Inspire then. First, let's give him the old gas bomb. The old plasma grenade. Yeah. Catch. Deeply satisfied. Oh, that's right, lost her here too. Oh boy, this is gonna get so fun. Spirit Spare only had some Spire earlier. Two glorious wins. That's good stuff. We have nothing to fear. Not quick enough, huh? Combat protocol does five, of course. Take the shot then. Hostile target down. Almost at the end of this campaign. Yes, we are. Very close to it. That'll reveal me. The shadows fail us. It's fine. Lost her super easy at the moment.
We're actually probably going to have a couple, uh, a dif difficult few missions. Uh, for the next little bit, because there are faceless and... Lost on every mission. So that'll be fun. Moving to position. X-ray neutralized. Target eliminated. Hostile terminated. Heading out. Asset secure. Oh my god. That was just hiding there? Terrifying. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> wait, wait, I have an answer to this thing. I hope. He's back. Better than ever. that I can see it. I guess that'll be okay. Perfect. Please shoot at it. Doesn't matter if you hit or not. That's not important. Adjusting sights. I only have one ammo. Got it. Shit. Right, because I'm lost. Welp. Had a plan, but it's gone now. Keepers, man. It's very unlikely to do anything. You just want to shoot it one time, huh? No real reason not to. Still a chance to kill it, after all. Even stealth, but he'll probably be revealed again. Let's try to kill him. Easy. Never didn't have it. My plan is restored. On the move. Target neutralized. We're gonna run away though. We put the fear into them. 
Yep. Starting to get curved. Keep going. I'm on it. Looks like a great grenade here. Assuming I can move far enough. Assumption. Could use the claymore to blow the wall open. Can't hit them both with it, though. I want a pure claymore over there. So I don't have the upgraded claymore on this character yet. Bit of an oversight on my part. Guaranteed kill the sectoid. Combat protocol does that too, actually. Moving out. That's right, no plan survives contact with the enemy. Not one. Right, that's what I'm gonna do. Throwing the hook! And the Viper. Which feels pretty good. Probably 100% if we step forward here. Moving to position. Yeah. Or I can use Fanfire. I'd rather kill the Viper than the Sectoid. Do both though. Got it. I need to reload. And then this is one hundred percent to kill because of the stock. Shoot at me. Thank you. I'm all right. What's over there? Just the one lost swarm? That's not bad if that's how it works. I'm ready. You're at that I have to deal with multiple. Target neutralized. On your order. Secured. Wait, what? You can't just run away like that. You're a mission objective. Hello? Mm -hmm. Moving to position. I'm going. Both. So 
way to get them both. It's not the key. Yeah, there we go. No one is safe. Nice. My natural habitat. Now that we move even faster in shadow here. I will go. Uh, 1080p 60... Do we run at 60? I think we're running at 1080p 60 these days. Anyway, that's the highest uh, that I've got the stream set to at the moment. Can't have higher quality than the streamer is uploading. Location at the confirmed. end of the day. It's just not how it works. On the move. Sword the VIP. I don't want to do that. Not my choice. On the move. Stasis is a okay by me. A little annoying, but not a real problem. to die. You are leaving. We are known to them. Got him. Good to go. Okay, I'll go. <laughs> Status confirmed. Target package in custody. Already there. Bonk. Alien reinforcements Menace inbound. Five, we're picking up an enemy transport inbound on your current position. This is the one, right? Already there. On your order. I can handle that. It's not too far. Heading out. Got it. Moving. Goodbye. I'm gone. Let's go. I've had my fill. Let's go. I'm going. VIP secure and in position for evac. Menace one five, the GG is down. Repeat, we've lost the package. We must never allow these dissidents to fill our hearts with fear. Their victory today is a minor footnote in history, a small bump on the path of salvation the elders have set for. work out there, Commander. The aliens must be getting nervous by now. Yes, and the VIP was in fact recovered. Excellent work, Commander. Your efforts continue to Wait, bolster what? the resistance movement across <laughs> the globe. No, we didn't. While we are pleased that your team was able to neutralize the Advent VAP, we won't gain any intel from a corpse. We have zero intel. Alright, well, I feel a little cheated, not gonna be on it. Not gonna lie here game. Did we evac the VIP last? We might have. Totally might have. Seems likely, in fact. I'll be interested to hear what this funny. Dr. G -G. Tygen thinks the aliens are trying to do. All right. Well, I think that's going to conclude our play session today. We've had a lovely game of XCOM, some amazing Spire runs. There will be more Spire coming up tomorrow. 
not later than noon Eastern time. Tomorrow's going to be a bit of a shorter stream, so I'm planning on just doing Slay the Spire for a couple of runs, and then I'll have to have to go as a heads up. So short Spire stream tomorrow, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday will be normal streams this week. Very excited for that. But we'll be back into XCOM soon enough. We did lose a few soldiers today. First time in a while we've done so. A little bit of hubris on that triple gatekeeper mission. Uh, cost us dearly there, including one of our war suits, but we can always get those back. We can always get those back. All right, folks, for now, this is me signing off, saying thank you so much for watching. Ta-ta for now. I hope you all have a lovely, lovely evening. Until next time, stay cozy, be kind to one another, and have a good one. Toodaloo, folks.